revolution is here and it is here in full force. We saw it at Monza, a fantastic motor race where we saw Core Motorsports come out smelling of roses. But this is round two of your Blank Pan GT series at the proverbial home of British Motorsport. We're here in Silverstone. We're going to show you full coverage live here on Racebot TV, on iRacing Live, and we will see you in a couple of minutes for pre-race coverage and qualifying. Since 2010, the highest echelon or sim racing competition has focused on NASCAR and Grand Prix racing. 50 of the best drivers in the world doing battle for championship glory. Each man for himself, and even though there may be teammates on track, each driver is in command of his own destiny. Until now. 2016 sees the start of a new era in World Championship competition with team racing getting its chance in the spotlight. No longer can one driver rule supreme, but you must rely on those with whom you share a car, a setup, a strategy. Endurance racing can be very different to other forms of motorsports, with races in this series lasting either three or six hours. Teams of two or three drivers perhaps on opposite sides of the world, will share seat time, each having to collectively work towards one common goal. Crash out, and it's not just you who you let down. Officially sanctioned by SRO, it will be teams of drivers who will go head to head, car to car, rival to rival, in the pursuit of a championship. And there's over $25,000 in cash and prizes up for grabs. Some of the world's biggest sim racing teams are represented. There's also a group of teams who haven't seen this stage before, who want to make their mark and say we can hang with the best. The team racing revolution is here. It's loud, it's exciting, and it lives on iRacing Live starting April 23rd. Welcome back then, ladies and gentlemen, to what is your Blank Pan GT Series here. Practice underway, waiting for qualifying to get off. Jake Sperry here, joined alongside with the uh, commentators of Randy Chenalf and Oscar Hardwick. And well, Oscar, I'm going to come to you straight away. And a very important point coming out of last race is the fact that uh, VRS Coanda Simsport are certainly a team to be looking out for here today. You look at them, they're further down the field being in the uh, uh, the BMW, the balance of performance are a little bit different, but the big thing to note is Jorn Jens is qualifying for them or qualified for them in the first um, uh, part of the series. Um, do you think that they'll qualify with him for the second part of the series? I mean, they've got three incredibly quick drivers who can come in. Renz Brokerman, Klaus Kavekas, Marcus Lenderman. They're all up there. They all have the potential. Yeah, it's a very difficult one to call. I mean, the difficulty that they have, and it's a nice difficulty to have, is everyone on their team is really quick. They might go with Jorn again, but I'll, I'll be honest, it will just be down to whoever's been quickest for them in practice at this stage at Silverstone. Most certainly it will be Randy. Well, um, the first thing we've got to talk about here at the moment is going to be Hazer Cecilia as well, his team of Dark Tigo. Now, we know Hazer Cecilia was incredibly quick and a massive talking point was the fact that he didn't come in at the regular time to make his driver change. He made the change with 45 minutes to go, hand over to David Alexi Jordan. And well, to be fair here, he was a little bit slower than his teammate. He was approximately about two seconds a lap which is, is difficult, really, when he was running up looking for the race lead. Do you think that he's going to do exactly the same thing again, or do you think he's going to switch off at the uh, two-hour point? Well, Jesus is someone who is stereoty uh, stereotypically always been aggressive and someone who will always make moves. 
moves, so I definitely think he'll do it. But it's, it's just one of those things of, you know, how quick will David be? I think, you know, David definitely has pace if Jesus is running with him. But like we saw at Monza, you mentioned it, uh, David got in the car, and, and he was roughly two seconds per lap off pace of Jesus. And the big thing for me at Monza is they would have known that, considering that they made that extra stop to get Jesus as much time in the car as well. But they actually ended up spinning the Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red Car, who actually dominated the first part of that event. So for me, if you're a team that you know that one of your drivers is that far off pace, you know how can you really rationalize making moves like that that actually end up taking taking out a race leader? It's just you know almost very, I don't want to say immature, but just not the greatest of racecraft, and really not a good way to to gather respect for some of these competitors. Yes, most certainly. I think that you have to see um, Zircon Tigo is looking to try and recover in the final part of your motor race, and well. It's certainly been a fantastic, and um, Oscar, I'm going to talk to you about this circuit. We're here at Silverstone, we're running the uh, 2009 layouts of the circuit. We're seeing uh, Abbey's going to be used, we're going to see Priory and Bridge being uh, involved. It's a very difficult circuit, actually, to make your overtaking opportunities. Qualifying is going to be oh so crucial, and, well, uh, being very honest here, it's going to be certainly one to look out for um, when you're looking at your main overtaking opportunities being down into Stowe, and possibly the overtake down into Abbey as well. Yeah, you've got a good point there, and I think that a lot's going to come down to the run from Cops all the way down to Stowe. That section, your maggots, beckets, everything there is so crucial to an overtake, and it's odd. You, you're now at a circuit after having been at Monza, where it's a case of sit behind someone in a straight line, then go for the move. And you come here, and you need to be picking up five or six corners consecutively to properly line up a move into a, another area. I think the part of the track we'll see the most action on today is certainly in Sector 3. And it's where you've got all the tighter, slower corners bunched up together there. And that's where you're going to see cars making moves. And again, this is a bit more of a BMW track than we saw last time out at Monza. So definitely the guys with the better manoeuvrability and traction at those low speeds are going to be making moves in the final sector of the circuit at Silverstone today. Most certainly, balanced performance certainly one to be looking out for as we are halfway through your uh, practice session heading towards qualifying. Randy, balance of performance here. It's definitely going to be one that we're going to look out for. You took uh, Monza and you saw that McLaren were a lot quicker uh, than some of the other cars in that uh, way, but your balance of performance bounced out where we had at least two cars from every team, uh, well, every manufacturer, inside your top ten. Um, What's the balance of performance looking like this time? Have McLaren got it all their own way again, or are we going to see some cars like the BMW stated climbing up through the ranks and being a more credible threat? Well, it's certainly much closer than it was at Monza. You know, we saw at Monza the BMW definitely struggling, which is stereotypically what you even see in real life. The, the BMW Z4 GT3s, they were always, always uh, struggling at Monza, where I think only once in the real world did one ever qualify within the top 10. So in some ways, they almost performed better than they did in the real world. But like you said, you know, the BMWs, you know, at, at Monza, only two finishing in the top 10. And, you know, of those were kind of surprises, I think. I think almost everyone would have expected the Kalandic BMW to probably be the top finisher, but they were the third or fourth one to finish. I think overall looking at this event, I think the McLaren will be suffering a little bit just due to the general slipperiness of the surface. I'm expecting actually the Audis to be very, very strong here today. They generally have very, very good uh, top end when compared to the uh, Mercedes as well as the BMW, but they're also very, very good on that downforce. I think the Audis will be, you know, definitely have the edge here. Maybe uh, the Mercedes will probably be strong too, but I think it'll be a toss up between an Audi or a Mercedes probably winning this pen. Most certainly it will be, and well, it's going to be certainly very interesting to see which drivers are going to do well. And actually, a driver that we do need to talk about, or a team, is Core cool Motorsports. Alexander Voss then is filing himself around the circuit right now in the number 33 machine. At the moment, well, he's got everything to know. He came in under the radar. Well, his team came in under the radar, um, Oscar. You look at what sort of a drive uh, drivers those two are at that team. They've done exactly everything that they need to do. They won the first race from eighth on the grid back up to pole. And it's certainly going to be one to look out for. I don't think they're going to have that dark horses effect again. But what do you think their chances are going to be today? Their chances are, are very good because they are the first team this season that have proven they can run a race like that. They don't need to be right up on the front row to capitalise. And when the opportunities present themselves, they take them. But they also drive so consistently and cleanly over a three-hour period. Yet, yeah, you've got to put a lot of... I mean, you, you pin pressure on them now. I guess that's their difficulty, is the pressure is now put on. They're a team that we know can attack and battle and can actually win these races. And Silverstone's another circuit that the R8 should run well at. As Randy said, 
the R8 is a car that can definitely contend for a win here, and looking at the pace currently being shown by Alexander in warmer, it's another track where they could very feasibly, just through running a sensible race again, end up at the front. I mean, last time out, I don't think any of us commentating said that Core would be who we would pick for a winner, and they proved us all wrong, and yeah, absolutely believe that they could be doing it again today. Most certainly they could do, and well, you have to say that they are doing a fantastic So we've just lost Jake Sperry there, our lead commentator momentarily, as he's sorting out his microphone. Oh, speaking of what, just like that, and he's back. I do so. apologise, had a few technical <laughs> issues there, but we will uh, continue on the race. We've got about two and a half minutes of this session to go, and certainly there's going to be quite a few things to talk about there as well. We'll get the first glitch out of the way there, just so that we don't get any others going through. Actually, uh, someone driving the car right now is Bono Huis here, uh, Randy. Bono Huis. Um, a driver who's been all over the world and now he's come to here. All red line cars at the moment are in the top five of practice. Is this going to be the time where we see red line start to assert dominance here on the series? Well, that's definitely a huge question mark for everybody because Team Redline has typically not done a lot of GT racing up until this championship started. So seeing them all running strong, and you know, I don't want to say anyone's surprised because obviously they have a very, very talented group of drivers across all three cars. But, uh, you know, definitely good showing from them here in this. I mean, obviously, it's still just practice. We still have a couple minutes to go until qualifying starts. But very, very well done by them. Now, as far as Bono goes, I think Bono might have a very, very strong race here today. You know, and there's a lot of eyes watching Bono and how he competes on this stage in this series. And I, and I think he's going to be someone who actually works very well under the pressure. I think he's going to capitalize on it. And I think he's going to, you know, finish very, very strong. Yeah, I think he's going to be very, very strong today. You can see him just driving into pit lane. Everyone practicing their pit entries and pit exits. Is certainly something very, very interesting to go on. Quite a few drivers here, very underrated. And actually, drive to look out for today. Patrick Pischler qualified second. Pure Racing Team Oscar didn't have everything their own way. With one minute to go, is everything going to be okay with them today? Do you think that they're going to tumble down the order due to balance of performance, or is their skill going to shine? Um, I don't believe that you're going to see Pure or any McLaren team really feature in the top five today, but if there is a McLaren team that's going to prove me wrong, it will be the likes of Pure. The pace that they exhibited at Monza, despite the balance of performance, was incredible throughout, and you know, luck, bits and bobs like that didn't quite go their way, that's the nature of the racing. There are other tracks coming up on the calendar that will once again lean towards the McLaren being a bit more competitive, so even if we do not see Pure feature today, we'll certainly be seeing them feature later on in the season. We certainly will see them feature on later on in the season. Just half a minute to go then, and certainly this will be very interesting to work out to see what will go and happen here. Qualifying is going to be just around the corner, and well, we're going to see a quarter of an hour, three laps around the track. Certainly going to be one to look out for, certainly one that you have to be careful of. And Randy, this is certainly going to be one race where you have to surely say that you cannot pick a winner just instantly off the bat. Yeah, this is one of those races, like you said, it's it's really kind of, you know, everything's up in the air right now. You know, going into Monza, we knew that, you know, it would probably, you know, there are a very good chance that a McLaren would come away with the win, and if not, you know, it'd probably be a Mercedes or pro more likely the Audi, I'd argue. And, you know, that's exactly what we got. Going into here, the balance performance, like we said, much, much closer. And it's, it's really... It's really anyone's, you know, any of these top five, top ten teams that we saw running at Monza. It's basically any of these teams that I think, you know, could come away with a, with a win here. Most certainly they could come away with a win. All eyes on the cars then, leaving out the field. Certainly a lot of drivers who you're looking to try and see push themselves up through. You look at Redline, they could be a threat. Radicals could be a threat. Inex always up there and proving that they can be a top team. And actually a team that we haven't really talked about here. It's the number one machine. It's JCL Apex Racing UK. Antoine Higelan at the wheel here, Oscar. And well, they only survived four laps at Monza. And what's something very important to remember is this is only a five race series. You're going to see that there is no drop weeks. You have to be at your best all of the time. And at the moment, they really aren't showing what they are capable of. They qualified down 33rd, I believe, in the first race. Um, can they do any better this time by? Hopefully, we'll hope won't see history repeat itself. Well, Apex Racing are certainly going to be hoping that history doesn't repeat itself. And frankly, even if their qualifying isn't strong, they'll be sitting there hoping that they at least reach lap five today as opposed to just lap four. Uh, it's, it's a tough break when that happens. It's such a team effort and so much effort goes into driving these cars quickly 
from all of the drivers that take part. So to go out on lap four of an endurance race can't have been nice for them. They'll have come back today though, and they are back today, reinvigorated, trying their hardest again, and I'm hoping to see them move up the field. And um, looking at the times in practice, it's certainly a field that appears to be closer on time than it was at Monza. So the track may be leaning towards helping everyone in the balance of performance. Most certainly. Uh, Randy, we were saying that the balance performance was around about half a second between all of these cars. It's certainly going to be one that's very tight. We're going to see qualifying so paramount for everyone. Um, the question I'm going to ask you is, are we going to see some names that we didn't really expect? We saw a core motorsports happen, say, um, in the opening uh, opening race of the season. For the second race of the season, are you looking to see another name uh, pop out out of the blue, one that we weren't expecting? I mean, I certainly wouldn't be surprised if we see a, a different team kind of pop up and qualify very well, maybe even race very well. There's a lot of talent within this championship right now, so I mean, it could, there are several teams that they have the drivers and they have the talent level that, you know, you could argue that they can get themselves up there. So it's hard to pick who it might be. I mean, obviously, like you said, Core Motorsports really a, a bit of a surprise going into the first race and them coming away with the win. Um, but not a huge one. Uh, I think if they're the dark horse team to maybe talk about, I think for this race, maybe Thrustmaster Mabano. They've been very, very strong across multiple uh, championships thus far coming into this. Um, you know, and, and maybe even Curb Surfers. Curb Surfers ran very, very well at uh, at Monza, which was a bit of a surprise, I think, to almost everyone. But there are a few teams that I think if you said, you know what, they may get run very strong today, that I don't think you could really argue with. Certainly not. Looking here at the number 38 machine, this is Team Redline Blue. Ollie Packler at the wheel here as he heads himself now through Abbey into the left and then he'll be followed very swiftly by the right-hander as well. And it's certainly going to be one where it is certainly paramount to get that corner correct. Now, as he heads himself now into the right-hander of Bridge, he's making sure that he's holding his speed, his line, very important, into Priory, lovely left-hander, down to 85 miles an hour. Make sure you don't run too wide on exit here as you head to Brooklyn, slowest part of the circuit, down to 55 miles an hour before you hit Wood, um, Luffield here, the right-hander, would cut the final corner is a small kink there, and where it's all about maximizing the run, Get yourself this perfect drive. You're going to see the first times coming through. Core Motorsports fastest 145.6. Ali Packler to the line here, Oscar. You're going to see this lap time. Well, it's a 145.3. You'll put the car pole by three tenths of a second right now. But surely, surely there's going to be quite a few drivers who want to make their names heard. Yeah, absolutely. 45.3 is just a fantastic time. I mean, we didn't see anything quicker than that in the warm-up. And you can only assume in warm-up it's the qualifying drivers out having qualifying runs. And as I've said that, Team Redline Black, the 36 car, move into second place with Gregor Hutu. So a really strong opening to qualifying from two of the Redline cars. I can't quite see at the moment. Oh, there we are, 34 Team Redline Green, currently down in 11th. So talk about a strong opening from a group of cars from the same house there. Fantastic work. Very important indeed. And actually, here we were talking about this earlier on, who'd be in that VRS Coanda Simsport number 18 machine. The answer is Klaus Kavekas will come in to take qualifying here. He's running himself now through Brooklyn's here. The left-hander has one more corner to go. It's so interesting to see where Coanda will come in because they really, they were absent almost, almost invisible from Monza. And of course, that might be down to balance the performance. We're not really too sure but Klaus Kavekas then drive for the line where is he going to slot his motor vehicle answer is going to be a 145 421 row number two Randy that is absolutely amazing for them yeah this is exactly what they need going into Monza they started P25 which if you're a car that's within the championship hunt and a championship favorite that's not where you want to be currently qualified P3 I think even if you know they don't get a better lap in That'll probably net them a P5 almost guaranteed. So absolutely fantastic lap by Klaus there. Another team to talk about, we talked about a little bit just before qualifying started in terms of surprise teams. TTLR Next Level Racing, they got themselves currently qualified P6. That's the Australian team with Madison down. Absolutely well done by them. Yes, very well done indeed. They're heading out to do their second lap so far. And while there are quite a few cars looking to try and get themselves through, and making sure they get a great lap. Evo Howler then in Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red, number four, seventh at the moment, 45-5 at the moment. That is going to put him into P number four. And in that, uh, McLaren, I believe that is as well. Evo Howler is bringing everything to the table, doing a fantastic job. And well, there's quite a few cars here are really pushing. And actually, Red Line Green aren't doing the best of jobs here, Oscar. You can see them down in 12th, and that's really not where they want to be. 
No, it's not. And I feel as though there's plenty to come from Bono at the moment. I don't think that's a completely representative time for him. In, in fact, he is back out on track, so presumably going to have another crack at it. That said, we're looking at him in 12th place on a 45.7. That's only four tenths off of pole at the moment. So we say he's not really doing a good job. It's four tenths. I mean, that's just how close the competition is here. Yes, the competition very close here. Looking now at Dark Ontigo Racing Team number 43. Hazel Cecilia at the wheel. And well, there's been a lot of criticism. There has been a lot of critique on this driver, on this team, on the actions that happened at Monza. And well, we'll certainly see whether he has the pace today to be challenging up for a race win. That's always going to be a potential. And well, you can see him heading through Brooklyn's now. Tight on that curve, making sure that he's almost rubbing those sausage curves even further on the inside on the rumble strip here as he heads himself a wider line taken here but through the drive to the line here Randy you're going to see what they're going to try and do and well for Hazel Cecilia his drive to the line for Dark Contigo Racing Team his time is going to be a 1.45.5 he puts himself in row number three with a Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red they're up there they're looking for a fight once again yeah they're up there and they're going to be you know if everything stays the same as he pulls the car off after that first lap that was his first lap out so he will have time to run another one um, he's going to be starting right next to the car that they uh, they got into that drama with going to the first chicane at Monza, so hopefully nothing happens there, but I, it really is all eyes on Dark Contigo, and it's not really all eyes on Jesus, because Jesus is generally known as being very, very quick, as I believe another car just put themselves up front, yeah, Core Motorsports just put themselves P3, so absolutely well done by them, but, you know, really, Dark Contigo, it's, it's, it's a lot of eyes on what David's able to do going into this event. Most certainly looking at Joni Tamala then coming across the line 45 3 2 1. He's just six thousandths off a pole. He'll put his car in X Racing Red into second front row of the grid. And actually, someone we need to look out right now is Gregor Hu to there. Mr. Five Time in that red line black car here. He's third at the moment and he has potential here to go ahead of his own teammate, ahead of Inex Racing Red. And well, at the moment, it's proving that to finish first, you first have to be finished right now. Cars flying up through the field. Iberica up into P6. VRS Coanda, P number five right now. Direct Clutch Motorsports, number 76. They're P7 at the moment. Oscar drives to the line for Gregor Hutu here, and he runs a little bit wide on exit there, trying to maximize his lines. He'll come to the line. Will he go any quicker? Answer is going to be a 1.45.6. No, he doesn't do it. So red line black, they're going to have to play the same game they did at Monza. Yeah, I mean, currently sitting in third, potential for a few of the guys behind to improve and drop them back a number of spots. I mean, a very good run there from Gregor. It's very nice to see him out of the open wheelers and driving around slightly heavier GT cars and actually is just is showing his class because he turns up and he drives them quickly. Redline Black had a very good showing last time out. I mean, they're very much in the championship hunt. In fact, talking about the championship hunt teams, you've got Inex Racing Red, Team Redline Black and Core Motorsports currently all nose to tail in qualifying. Three teams that did come out of the first rounds with results that could absolutely put them with the right footing to go forward and take this championship at the end. Yes, certainly looking at Glacier Racing's Alexia Loma here in that Glacier Racing BS number one car. Number 42 came to the line, 145.7, only P17. That's four tenths of a second. And actually, car's still out on a flying lap. You're looking at Mad Cow Racing Buttercup, Michael Fabian. He's on track, but also Dave Geelink in that Inex Racing Blue Machine. He's down in 20th on a 1.45.8 in the moment. It's not something that we normally see. The time's starting to go down here. Five minutes in session. Everyone heading towards their final laps out on circuit. Dave Geelink wants to look out for here, Randy, as he comes to the light. Of course, this is just the magic merry-go-round of times tumbling further and further. And what was good will not be good. 45-7, he jumps one position. Inex Racing Blue will think that that is not a good job done. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be a little bit uh, disappointed with that because obviously Enix Racing Red got themselves up on second place, so four tenths off their uh, one, you know, one of their team cards. You know, Enix, the other Enix Racing car, you know, the yellow car, is actually not that far ahead. So, but I'm sure both the yellow car that was qualified by I'm not sure who actually drove that one. That was that was actually run by PJ Sturgios. I'm sure they'll both be a little disappointed with that qualifying effort. Yeah, they will be quite disappointed. Actually, we've got to remember there's only 39 cars here at the moment, and well. It's certainly very competitive up and down. The difference here between first and last is only one and a half seconds so far between Red Line Blue and the number five machine of the team, GT Nankar. And while looking at the Friction Racing Bandits, Christian Tanahote not having the best of uh, drives here as he heads his drive up to line. He's 38th at the moment in the number 69 machine. K 
Can he go any quicker than what he's doing? Answer at the moment is going to be no. That is going to be end of the line for him. And well, you've seen these times coming down. Actually, Klaus Kaveka still has one lap to go. So does Eva Howler as they're heading themselves up through a club corner right now, Oscar. And well, for Eva Howler, he's done a great job. He put his car on the second row to begin with. Now he's bumped down to ninth. Yeah, is he going to be looking to try and make sure that he's using that rubbered in tarmac to get his car quicker or not? He's going to be having a go at it. I'd be mighty impressed if he manages to get that McLaren to go any quicker than he's already got it to go. Eyes at the moment for me, certainly on Klaus Kivikatz at VRS Coanda Simsport in the number 18 BMW. A car that we were convinced around this circuit would be going well, and is going well currently in fifth. But I'm sure that he'd like to get a front row start as actually he's run out really wide in the final corner. So I'm not sure if maybe he's going on to a lap. Um, I believe this is out lap right here. Oh, he right. ran one lap his first time out, so he's just setting himself up to get as much of a run onto this front straightaway as possible. Let's go on board then a lap with Klaus Kovacs then in the number 18 machine. Into turn number one, he comes along here. This is Cops Corner, very crucial there, 110 mile an hour. And it's certainly going to be one that you need to look out for here. And now the greatest stretch of corners, in my opinion here, it's going to be Maggots and then the left-hander of Beckett's here coming up right now. And then you've got Chapel to come up to end the trio. Fantastic stretch of corners, slower and slower still. All about that switch, the roll in the body of the car. And now down onto the hangar straight. Uh, Randy, take us through the second half of the lap. The second half of the lap is where things really start to get slower, but, you know, it's... It still stays quick at first going through into Stowe right now. One of your best passing opportunities once we get into the race. But this is where, like I said, things are going to start slowing up a lot. Where you start breaking hard here at Vale, turn number 8. And then the run through Club 9 and 10 and the run down to Abbey. This is where things start to tighten up. This is where you, I think we'll actually see a good amount of incidents. And as right now as Klaus works through Club, this is one of the slickest parts of the circuit as well. Especially on exit. So fighting rear traction here is going to be very, very difficult. Yes. Uh, temperature is going to be very difficult. You can see him head into Abbey now. The left right chicane that you see here down to 65 miles an hour before opening up the throttle, opening up the gas, and oh, he gets a massive twitch coming out. He does so well to hold the car and now heading through bridge. I think he's going to say that's the end of that one. And yes, he does. He won't go any quicker than fifth for the time being. And well, certainly been very interesting. I don't think I can see another car out on the flying lap right now. Possibly Ollie Packler is. I think he's on a lap here, Oscar. Take us through his final uh, stage. Uh, just finding him at the moment. Yeah, into the very final corner on the circuit here minus the kink at Woodcut and taking an in inside line going to be interesting to see the difference in line actually through the final corner seen lots of people diamonding that corner and then looking at Oli Packler there taking the tight line all the way around as he comes to the line now already on pole does he improve no he doesn't but a 45-4 so he would have kept himself within the top five even on this second lap even on the second lap indeed I believe every car has set all their retrospective lap times so we can run you through then your final uh, qualifying results here from Silverstone and Team Redline Blue will put themselves on pole then by just six thousandths of a second ahead of Inex Racing Red. Team Redline Black, they will put their car P number three there with Mr. Five Time at the wheel. Championship leaders Core Motorsport will join alongside. Row number three, you see VRS Coanda Sim Sport there, joined with Iberica Racing Bank. Row four, Direct Clutch Motorsports and Dark Contigo Racing Team. We'll cycle it on back for you. And actually, there's quite a few names that you do not expect further down the field. You look at Inex Racing, Randy. They're down in 16th. You look at Frostmaster and Mavano Black down in 23rd. And while there's certainly quite a few cars that you don't expect there, people starting to think that this is a, going to be a second uh, thing there. The other Coanda Sim Sports car, actually, the number 88, it's down in 35th. Unbelievable. Yeah, the just the level of competition in this series is just extraordinarily high. Uh, you know, qualifying is very, very tight. You know, good chunk of the field separated only by about a second or so. So, I mean, really, you need absolutely everything you can get out of qualifying when, you know, a tenth or two could be the, you know, better part of 10 to 15 positions up the order. A lot of these guys, even though they're going to be starting out of it, I think they might actually be qualifying or in race, they might actually be very, very strong. And something else to look at uh, kind of down the order. Mad Cow Racing, Bessie and Iberica Racing Interactive's P25 and 26 both have themselves qualified with 45 917s and you know that just kind of goes to show exactly how close this uh, this field is when going down to P27 still almost you know almost at the top 30 and no one's out of the 45 second bracket. Yeah, that's true. That's uh, awesome to see and well Right now, you're going to see these cars starting to wait to grid up. They've got two minutes to get up there, and then the pace car will take them around for one lap of the circuit, all about keeping those heats in the tyres. So, 
Right now, I'm going to say this right now, um, I believe that uh, Core Motorsport have a very good chance of taking two wins out of two. What do you guys think? Randy first, then you, Oscar. Who's your pick for the race win today? I actually think that's a very good point you bring up. I think Core, they have a lot of momentum, not only, you know, not only round one, they managed to get away with a win, but they've run very, very strong in other championships and other series as well in this Audi. I think that they have something, and you know they're just kind of getting into a stride and into a rhythm with all these endurance races they've been doing. I think they'll be very strong. But the other one car, team I'm really looking out for is VRS Coenas Sport. Like we said, you know, after finishing as far down the order as they did for them being championship contenders, you know, they, I don't think they can go any of these races the rest of the championship to have any hope of winning it if they finish anywhere outside of the top three so they need to push hard and need, they need to fight hard both today and for throughout the rest of the championship mr hardwick um i'm gonna do what i did at monza and say that nx racing red are gonna win and so i do hope that they don't just nearly win it again and come second because then they'll they'll start complaining and say can you stop saying it can you stop picking us to win but again nx racing red they're kind of the guys that i view as the endurance specialists and they've again put the car right at the front they've got such a good lineup and it's someone that's not on pole but you've got to say with team redline blue and team redline in general with their two teams basically in the first two rows difficult to stay away from them i'd like for an next win but yeah it's so, it's so difficult to say because the pace is so close it's incredibly close now you can see the cars are lining themselves up as they head through cops corner then on their parade lap of course once that flag drops, once the pace car comes in, we will be out and away for three hours. And well, we haven't really talked much about pit strategy. Randy, it's going to be all about making the hour mark. And we're thinking it's going to be a little bit easier than it was at Monza. Yeah, Monza, obviously one of those tracks where you spend so much time full throttle, you tend to burn a lot of fuel. And really, there's not a huge discrepancy in terms of lap time from Monza coming into, the, into this track. It'll only maybe a second or two. You're going to be using less gas because of it. So I think hitting the hour is going to be relatively simple. You know, the, the main thing is actually going to be who can go the deepest because, you know, there's really a big question in these cars. Um, you know, every every lap you stay out on old tires, you generally will lose about half a second or so. However, every single extra lap you go is also that little less in fuel you have to take in that last pit stop. So it's going to be something that you kind of have to uh, have to weigh the the pros and cons of in terms of strategy here do you stay out try to take as you know get yourself as short of a final stop as as possible or do you come in and get those new tires early yeah that's going to be the main question that we're going to see today and well uh, personally in my preference as i was driving that i'd try and stay out as late as possible i'd try and stay out make sure i'm using the tires the most of their capacity of course you're looking at that difference in tire wear um uh Oscar there you're looking at a difference of half a second a lap between a fresh tire and an old tire so maybe the undercut does have its benefits especially when you're uh, putting yourself in off into a train you're seeing these cars now heading themselves up through a uh, veil and club right now it's certainly just going to be about keeping those tires warm as they head up to the start of the race yeah they'll want to have warm tires and warm brakes if possible going on to the start and then referring back to the conversation about tire wear It'll be interesting to see if the undercut works, because whilst you might get yourself a newer, faster set of tyres, the closeness of the grid means you're almost always going to be dropping yourself directly into traffic. So there might be some value to the undercut, but only if you're confident you're going to be either in fresh air or that you can cut through the traffic with your extra half a second. But I don't see it happening. I think people will probably run basically as long as they can on fuel and then potentially change the tyres if needed. Although around a track like Silverstone, generally quite a high reserve, but I'm suspecting they will be doing suspected at all and well you can see them heading through bridge now we're just waiting just waiting to see when the cars will be backed up when you are going to see uh, the car of i believe that is ollie packler there in team red line blue we're gonna wait to see whether he can push himself out and away two corners to go you can see they're starting to bring themselves up to speed here and well three hours of racing second round of the championship here in your blank pan gt series Certainly going to be one to look out for. Watch out for all the names. Watch out for the surprises. Watch out for the racing. Pace cars in. We are underway here for what will be a fantastic race at Silverstone. The run to Cops Corner starts right now. There you can see they're going to run line astern as they head themselves in towards Cops Corner for the first time. A little bit of a look then from Core Motorsports. Not going to happen, but they are going to remain too wide behind. Make sure you look out into Maggots and Beckett's for the time being. But through turn number one, I believe they are all very much clean there, Oscar. Yeah, I was looking through the field and 
it would appear that everyone's got through clean. Still some shuffling as a ride oh, has gone around. Oh, and a huge oh. collection there. Unbelievable. We'll get a uh, uh, just a tally of who's been involved in that incident there. Unbelievable. Massive rolls there as he headed through Maggots and Beckett's there. I believe quite a few cars are falling themselves down the order. And it's not ideal at all. Not ideal one iota. But what this has done is started to open up the gap, especially when you look up towards these uh, mid-pack teams that it's all shaken up and Randy unbelievable start yeah absolutely unbelievable for the most part clean but we saw that one incident with Orion and the pure racing uh pure racing team number 12 car Orion just going into Magus and Beckett they pushed a little bit wide got the left side tires on the grass that spun the car around and unfortunately for for Florian White and the pure racing team number 12 car just you know wrong place at the wrong time did it absolutely nothing wrong that's all on Orion obviously and you know, I'm sure they're going to be really heartbroken. That's now two races in a row. Pure Racing Team has had one of their cars taken out in the first se uh, several corners. You know, last race it was the uh, the BMW. I can't remember which exact entry it was. This race is their Audi. You know, absolutely heartbreaking for them. Yes, it really is heartbreaking. You can see the cars now. We got another spin with the, the back marker Coanda team. Jesse even in the VRS Coanda Sport number 88. Just a little bit of a, an incident going through Abbey. Yeah, we're seeing quite a few incidents on cold tires, and actually we're seeing a fantastic battle. Antoine Higelin, uh, Christian Tanahote, and also Santeri Kalunki there in the core sim racing team. Not to get themselves mixed up, they're going to file themselves two by two. Lap one complete then, so we can get you then a source replay of what happened then with the uh, incident to do with Orion Racing here. Oscar, take us through it. Yeah, from what I could see, uh, it looked as though Orion went side by side with the next racing yellow through... I believe the second part of the, the Maggots Beckett's complex and just ran on a bit wide on cold tyres, a car with the engine in the back understeers, something that you can definitely encounter. So yeah, tricky tricky to tell who is at fault, but you gotta think that Orion maybe shouldn't have pushed so hard and then yeah, pure just nowhere to go. Horrible luck for them and horrible luck two races in a row, just like Randy had said. Yeah, very much so. Well the number twelve pure racing team has had a nightmare and well the number nine Orion racing car well, it wasn't ideal at all. And well, you can see cars are finding themselves onto pit row. Triton racing on pit row. It's not ideal for them. But you can see at the moment, it seems to be that we have a leading train at the front here. Uh, it's going to be uh, a train from first, second, third. And then the gap starting to form here to call Motorsport. The two red lines and Inex Red are actually starting to pull away here, Randy. And that's so interesting here because once you lose the draft, you're in a completely different ball game. Yeah, there's just a little bit of, the, of a gap here among your top three, however, it's not quite, you know, a lot. It's only about six tenths. The core and the likes of Kwanda, they haven't really dropped back enough yet that I think it's really a big issue. Obviously, just coming to the end of the second lap now, so there's still a lot of running to go. I think most of these front runners, they're just wanting to be patient and they're wanting to make, uh, make sure they get everything done cleanly. Yes, and there's a massive train actually behind Hazel Cecilia's Dark Tigo Racing Team number 43 machine there. You can see Evo Howler, Jeremy Bootaloop, Madison Down, TTLR, Curb Surface are there. Frostmaster and Vana Red will come in. That is for a penalty received over from Monza there. He has to go through a drive through penalty through the opening three laps. It's not ideal for Thrustmaster of Vano Red. It's not exactly what they want to do. But now it's all about a recovery, Oscar, as he heads himself now down pit road. Yeah, definitely going to be a case of recovery drive. And a drive through, not great for anyone at the beginning of the race, but when everyone's so bunched up like this at the beginning, there's certainly some credibility to saying that it's not a bad thing in as much as they're going to be getting some clean air where other people further up the field aren't going to be. So if they can make the most of that clean air and run a good race from here on in, they're certainly able to place themselves in a strong position by the end of the race. Certainly they will be, and well, we're going to focus here on Alexander Voss in that core cool motorsports car. We'll go to it because... VRS Goanda Simsport right behind with Klaus Gebekus at the wheel here. We're only uh, so far five minutes into your motor race right now. Three hours here on the clock. Of course, pit stops. Well, we're thinking two-stop strategy is normally going to be the way forward. And well, we're thinking that it's going to be a fantastic race here. As he heads himself up now, heading towards Abbey then. The left-right chicane It's going to be very important to get that run. You can see already lifting and coasting. Starts to happen a little bit. Trying to save fuel. Trying to make sure that you can run as far as you can. And especially when you're at that front of the train landing. You have to say the slipstream effect when it's not there. You're using up more fuel. You're trying to punch your way through the air. It's not going to work. You're going to use more fuel than the rivals behind you. And then you're struggling for the rest of the stints. Yeah, absolutely right there. You know, anytime you can save, you know, even just a little bit of a ga a little bit of gas, excuse me, it's just going to be very beneficial because that, you know, that enables you to either go longer or on your stop, you know, let's say you do a 
so because of that, you have a shorter stop. So either way, you know, it definitely is beneficial. Like you said, I think right now, I think most of your front runners just trying to be relatively cons uh, conservative here, just try to make sure they don't get caught up in any of these early incidents. Most certainly we do have our live timing then up and running here. It'll be RaceBot TV forward slash timing there if you want to come and get that. And of course, you can always be social with us on Facebook, on Twitter. Head over to RaceBot TV on both of those uh, scenarios and then you will find yourself in a fantastic place of discussion as well. And well, looking here right now at Danilo Jacobs right now further down the field in 24 in at number 86. Iberica Racing, Interactive 4 machine right now. He's got to deal with the cars behind of uh, Andreas Dingberger, uh, Dernberger actually there in the Pure Racing Team 73 machine, and also Michael Fabian in that Mad Cow Racing Buttercup car. And well, for battle slower down the field, it's all about staying consistent because if there are instances so further up through the field, you know that there is a chance to pounce Oscar. Yeah, absolutely. And at this stage in the race, it's not too damaging to be very far down the field because everyone's still close together, there's still opportunity for you to remain close to better point of paying position. It's more a case of if you find yourself in 30th or 35th with one hour to go, you're at a point where you can't necessarily and almost definitely won't be recovering from that into a top 20 position without something really bizarre going on. So at the moment, even if you are far down, it's a case of still keeping your head about you and hoping for incidents and mishaps ahead because you can certainly benefit from those in the near future. Most certainly, and massive credit going to the number 76 direct clutch motorsports team here. Christopher Osborne at the wheel here, heading themselves now through the final corner. That is going to be Luffield, and where you can see just how crucial it is to get a good qualifying there. He qualified 70, he's up one position so far in your motor race. We've had no lead changes at all, and well, now you're starting to see that gap between Core Motorsport and Redline Black here, Randy. You're seeing the gap, it's 1.2, it was 1.1 seconds actually as they cross the line. That's just about almost out of draft range. That's just about going to see that it's going to be a little bit more problematic later on in the race for Core. Yeah, this gap is just slowly and slowly increasing in size. And, you know, that's something these guys will need to definitely keep an eye on is, you know, whether or not that's the, those front three pushing harder than Core is and Core is maybe playing the long game just a little bit. But, you know, even if that's the case, actually, I think Coanda has a very good run out as it coming out of that final sector. But unfortunately, that, uh, that BMW just not quite having the top end there. Um, so really, really unfortunate that they can't get that move done because they were right up on the on the back of Core coming through a coming through Chapel. But Core can't really let this gap get too out of control. I think if they can keep it within two to three seconds, I think they can be well within striking distance three hours down the road. However, once that gap starts going to four, five, six, seven seconds, they're just going to be completely out of it. Yes, and we've got news of an incident here involving the Iberica Zalem team and also Inex Blue. I believe Iberica Zalem have hit the back of Inex Blue on lap number three of your motor race down at Stoke and Inex uh, Blue there. Their race is all but over right now. Oscar, you were someone who found that one out for us. What happened in that uh, retrospect? Yeah, it looks like the uh, driver there for uh, Iberica Zalem just yeah, it went for a move that was never going to work out. Went hard in on the brakes down at Stowe in a race where everyone's pretty much braking at the same point and went into the front left corner of the Inex Racing Blue car and from what I could see, pretty severe damage to both cars but the Inex Racing Blue SLS, sorry, not SLS, AMG, I'm going to make that mistake so very many times, uh, came off slightly worse in that coming together. Would be interested to see how they do. But yeah, not a good start, not a good move either from Pepe de los Heras for the Iberica Racing Zone team. Yeah, certainly not not ideal at all then for the number 10 machine. You can see him right now heading himself through the final corner. Now down the front straight away, heading himself now towards turn number one on circuit. That is Cops corner right now. Well, for Pepe de los Heras behind the wheel of Iberica Racing Zalem at the moment. He seems to be all right for the time being. You can see the gap starting to form in your late pack of the field. But the front pack of the field certainly interesting. Um, Randy, I believe Inex Racing Red are just waiting for the moment. It's going to be either at pit stops or it's going to be in that final hour or somewhere later on in your motor race. You see them, they're just waiting. They're just gauging out Red Line Blue, forcing them to use more fuel. It's so imperative at this early stage in the race that you can just play the psychological mind games early on as you can. Actually, looking at Bono Huis under threat right now for PJ Sturgis. Inex Racing Yellow here versus Red Line Green here. Number 11 down into Vale and Stur uh, Club. He say that's Bono under uh, under threat from uh, the NX Racing Yellow Car, although Bono has actually gotten uh, by the NX Racing Yellow Car in this lap. So Bono already starting to work his way up the field. Talking about the NX Racing Red Car again, though, I think you're absolutely right. I think they're just playing the long game. We know from Monza they know how to keep themselves 
within this top two to three uh, three places over the course of the event. And we also know from Monza they know how to stay out there on a, on a tank of gas longer than almost anyone. I really think that if there's anyone that's going to play the long game and stay out on a single tank later than anyone else, it'll probably be this NX Racing red car. And I definitely think it's going to benefit them over the course of this event. Yes, certainly we will actually. And looking here, down in your lower half of your top ten, Evo Howler then. Jeremy Bootsloop, Madison Down. Here are the three teams are TTLR, Radicals Online, and Ge Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red. Number four, number 16, and number 91 heading themselves down towards turn number one. They've lost the draft. They're uh, in a position now where they're fighting for their own little race. And, well, we were expecting a, a few troubles here for the, uh, for the McLarens here, uh, Oscar. We're looking at this one being that we're seeing three different cars uh, all in together with each other. This is certainly going to be one that you need to look out for, especially later on in your motor race. Yeah, absolutely. I'm interested to see how the BMW deals with maybe making a passing attempt on the McLaren, because as we see here, they go out onto the hangar straight. This is McLaren territory. I suspect the BMW is not even going to be able to do very much with the draft here. The straight line performance of the McLaren being quite so strong. In fact, as you see, even sitting in the draft, the BMW didn't close the gap all the way down the straight. However, they get into sector two, come around Stowe, and this is where you see the twistier section of the track. As up ahead, we see VRS Granda Simsport defending their fifth position at the moment, so they're coming under attack as opposed to attacking court. That's a bit of a reversal of fortunes there. But yeah, Evo Howler doing a very good job in the Gecko Vortex in racing red car and driving very well in the twisty sections where in theory he should come under a lot more pressure from the BMW, the Radicals BMW, just behind him. Oh certainly then, it's VRS Grand Simsport versus Direct Clutch Motorsport right now as they head themselves on towards a bridge here, the right hander under that aptly named bridge and we're heading towards Priory you can see just looking for the lines, not quite getting the smoothest of exits there is Direct Clutch, they're looking to try and force a way through and of course the more you battle Oscar um, well, actually, we're going to go to Randy on this one. Um, the more that you battle Randy, you see that these guys, uh, they start to lose their time. They start to lose the gap towards other people, and then their races will just start falling away, and all the potential will just drop out of this one. Um, for Klaus Kavekas, he's got to avoid these landmines of being dragged into battles. Do you think that he's uh, doing a very good job of things at the moment? I think he certainly is, because I think he might have a little bit of pace on this core motorsports car in front of him. Not a lot, but just maybe a little bit, and I definitely think they're playing this long game. Because the thing with this BMW, like we like we were saying, it is definitely the slowest on the straights of all the cars, and it definitely struggles in terms of being able to make a move. However, it's also very, very good at being able to hold on to the tires compared to all these other cars throughout the event. I think if Klaus just sort of plays the patient game, uh, these guys around him who are thinking about starting to make moves, starting to make passes, they their tires are going to slowly over the course of this first scent, just slowly and slowly drop off, whereas his he will probably maintain a better pace. Yes, certainly here looking at the number 43, Dark Ontigo Racing Team Machine right now, having a look at the number 3, Iberica Racing Bent Car as they head themselves down into Vale once again. He's been looking two laps in a row. It's not quite materialised for the moment, Oscar. And well, there's been a lot of talk about Hazel Cecilia's uh, team, Dark Ontigo here. He's done a very good job at the moment to push. He's pushing very well right now. He's in eighth position. He's exactly where he started in qualifying. And he's looking to try and move up and then bridge the gap. Do you think that he's going to be looking here to use up his fuel a little bit more and come in for an early stop? Um, I don't think he'll be looking to come in for an early stop, he'll He'll just be looking to, you know, drive his race. And at the moment, his race involves being at a slightly better pace than the Iberica racing car just in front of him. So, yeah, he's looking into lots of the corners. We know from Monza that Hesse Cecilia is not afraid of having an overtake and certainly not afraid of making it a slightly rough one as well. And it'll be interesting to see what happens here. I can see Hesse having a look at a move in the next few laps. But he's certainly not going to push on or use more fuel than he has to because strategy is going to be the most important aspect of this race for every team and every driver. Most certainly here, PJ Sturgis then, Inix Racing Yellow, number 11 right now. He is under threat, he's lost a position then to the curb surface car, and now he's got to deal with Glacier Racing, BES number one, number 42 machine, here heading themselves down towards Maggots and Beckett section, the lovely flicks left and then right again. You can see just how important it is to get this section correct because it's so crucial to get that run down the hangar straight away and actually you can see Pete, um, you can see uh, uh, Enix Racing Yellow starting to close back down on the curb surface car right now and well it's going to be all about that slipstream down the straight are we going to see any moves here well for the time being Randy I don't think we are we're going to be in their holding paddles the rhythms are pretty much in session 
Yeah, just a little bit of a mirror harassment there by PJ Sturgios on that curb surface car. And like you said, we saw that Mercedes close up a lot on that McLaren going through that Magnus Vegas Chapel complex. And PJ looks at the inside going down into Vale. Not quite close enough to get that move done. And the curb surface car quickly shuts that door. And, uh, and very well done by uh, PJ Sturgios in that NX Racing yellow car to not run into the back of that curb surface machine. Um, so very, very well done by them. And this is going to be the part of the track where I think this McLaren will actually be very, very comfortable. This is where a lot of these corners slow down, and it's very, very difficult to make moves here. So even though they may not be the quickest, really not much that these cars behind could do. Yes, certainly. And actually, a point we need to bring up, Oscar, is the fact that Mr. Five Times Behind Team Redline Black's number 36 machine. And at the moment, it seems that gap is starting to open up. It's almost at a second last time round. We'll get your timings up for you to see what sort of gap it is going to be in this instance. And well, as they head themselves through the uh, start finish line, the gap between them is one second right now. This is danger territory here. It's not often that you see Redline Black fall themselves behind here, especially with NX Racing Red and Redline Blue. Gregor Hutu, he might be in a little bit of a spot of bother, can't you think? Um, potentially, I mean, one second at this stage in the race shouldn't be too much of a problem. And of course, we have to take into account the strength of the whole team here. And, you know, saying that, I'm not taking away from the strength of either NX Racing Red or the uh, Red Line Blue car that are up ahead of him. But, you know, it's, it's tricky to say. I don't think a second's going to matter at this point. I honestly don't. He could just be running ever so slightly slower, protecting tyres, fuel, any of the above things. He's certainly not losing out just yet to the small train of cars behind him. And I'm pretty sure that as soon as he does start losing out to that train behind him, that Gregor will get back on it and you'll probably see him close back up again. Yes, that will certainly be one thing to look out for then in the nearer future here. Right now you can see Klaus Kavekas in that 18 VRS Grand Sim Sport car right now. VRS Grand Sim Sport looking to challenge Core Motorsports right now here on the run down into Abbey here. And well, you can see that the leaders are two or three tenths of a second faster every single lap than everyone else in the field. That's just proving to you what sort of strength that they have. And at the moment here, VRS Coanda are going to hold fort, hold station here. They're going to run those tyres out, Randy. They're going to make sure that they are pushing Core Motorsports right to their very limit. Yeah, Klaus is definitely uh, pressuring this core motorsports car being dri driven by Alexander Boss. I'm talking about the leaders, you know, these top three. They've been running 46.5s, 46.6s basically every single lap. The rest of your field more or less running 46.8s, 46.9s. You know, that last lap uh, uh, that just went by, the only other car that's running 46.5s, 46 46.5s, excuse me, was actually Jesus Cecilia. So really, uh, you know, a substantial gap being stretched out by the top three. And definitely watch that dark Antigo Audi to maybe try to make moves and get himself up to the field here because he is showing incredible pace compared to the cars at the front. Yes, he certainly is. And where you can see here that uh, Dark Antigua now starting to close in. Same with uh, Iberica Racing Bank there. Driver at the wheel of that is Julian Rodriguez Moreno right now. And actually, they're closing in on this main group. It's so important. Let's just get a comparison of the lap times that time by. Iberica Racing Bank, 146.6. Hazer Cecilia, 146.6. Look at um, Direct Clutch Motorsport, 147 flat. That's three tenths of a second. So within two laps, you could potentially say here, Oscar, that they, we're going to have a train of five here in the battle for fourth. It's going to be about just waiting and making sure that you do the work now and you'll reap your reward later on. Yeah, absolutely. And I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, the drivers out there are of such quality, but Hayes Cecilia is noticing that this gap is closing. He's noticing that actually it's the car in front of him that's helping pull him along to close that gap. And when you're in a group of five, that's when stuff bunches up a bit more. That's when opportunities are more likely to present themselves. So Jesus now, despite having maybe had a few opportunities a few laps ago, just going to stick him behind the Iberic and BMW and then look for moves when they catch on to the small group in front. Currently being, I would say, held up ever so slightly by Alexander Vost of Core Motorsports. It certainly looks as though Klaus Kivikas has the pace advantage. Yes, yeah, certainly does have the pace advantage at the moment, and someone who is getting the pace advantage is the number 34 car, that is Team Redline Green. They have closed up onto the back of the number 91 machine of TTLR Next Level Racing right now. And well, that's certainly going to be one to look out for because just ahead of them, you have the lovely battle of Radicals Online Steel Series versus Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red. And well, 
We were talking about how he was uh, fighting his way through the field, found his way through on NX Racing Yellow, and well now his push is starting to work. He's using a little bit more expenditure on the tyres, a little bit more expenditure on the fuel here, Randy, but you have to say you've got to look at the risk versus reward sort of benefits right now. He's now in the benefit of slipstream. He's now in the benefit of saving the tyres. Yeah, he certainly is, Otto. I don't know if he's going to be trying to do that. He's still being consistently running about three to four tenths quicker than these cars in front of him, Bono, Bono has. And let's not forget, he started this race in 19th and has worked himself up to 12th position. So an absolutely fantastic first half of this opening stint by Bono to get himself up front. And actually, the TTLR car in front slips up just a little bit, and Bono had a, a much, much higher speed on entry going into Stowe there. I think Bono is still working hard to get himself, uh, you know, moved up into this into the have moved up to this uh, running order. Yes, Bono, who is then in that red line green car. He was the fastest man on circuit last time by with a 46.6 lap time. And well, you can see just how much it means to him. He can now settle down into a groove, settle down into a rhythm right now. And well, certainly, we're going to get yourself a graphic then on the left-hand side of your screen here, just so you can see where your biggest movers and shakers are off through the field. And well, the top uh, top five actually here, Oscar, they haven't actually changed any positions. So it just shows you um, that the the pecking order is really maintained here for the top half, but the lower half, well, it's all getting a little bit mixed muddled up. It certainly is. I think that there was a lot of shuffling that went on. Obviously, that first lap incident with Orion took out them and Pure. But there was a lot of shuffling with people avoiding that incident and checking up and other people maybe being a bit ambitious and looking for gaps that thankfully did open up. And yeah, speaking again briefly about Bono, I'm pretty sure that he did exactly the same at Monza. and got in that car and drove it forwards. That's such a good quality to have, even if that maybe they're not qualifying as well as you'd like. To have a driver that can get in the car and drive it through the field when it's such competitive racing. That's fantastic. They've Redline are on to a winner with that signing of Bono. He's doing a fantastic oh. job once again. We're just seeing a fantastic battle here. Number 11, Inex Racing Yellow. You can see Curb Surfers, Glacier Racing, Thrustmaster, Mavano Black in the mix, Inex Racing Blue, Radicals Online GT. All of them in this massive pack heading themselves down the hangar straight away. And well, you can see some moves left and right. There you can see Radicals Online GT. They're going to make the move on Inex Racing Blue, are they? To the outside, down at Stowe. And well, they're going to remain side by side as they head towards uh, the next corner of Vale. It's all important, that run. They're going to remain it here. And well, you can see the gap starting to form a little bit here around Randy But the move is going to be uh, definitive right now. And we're actually just behind them. You can see Virgil Racing Black here. They're going to try and put themselves in the mix. Uh, Stefan Mouchla at the wheel. And actually, Virgil Racing Black, of a team that actually are very understated here. You look about um, their team, their three drivers, Stefan Mouchla, uh, Anders Dahl, Kimi Ashu uh, One of the first commentaries I did with Race Bot was um, over at the uh, Virginia Targa. And at one stage, all three of those drivers were leading that race in a three hour motor race. And well, it just shows you here just how strong everyone is, but still, they're down fighting in the top 20. Yeah, Virgil Racing, a very, very strong team, and they're involved, like you said, with this. With this scrap of about eight cars, it's basically an eight-car queue, and basically everyone's really fighting with everybody here. You know, any little hiccup that happens towards the front end of this queue of cars is basically going to have an accordion effect all the way through this, and it's possible that someone loses a couple positions just from a little hiccup. So absolutely fantastic driving here from this group of drivers, and like you were talking about, Virgil Racing. Very, very successful. That driver, of uh, the Virgil Racing driver of Stefan Mugler, as well as Anders Dahl, been very, very dominant in Targa races in the past, and... You know, seeing people who have been that dominant and, you know, other special events that have been held here on the service, and then he sees that running in 20th place in this championship shows you just how strong this field is. Most certainly then, uh, Team Redline Black then back on the back of Inex Racing Red. That's certainly something to look out for, but we're going to stay with this battle for the time being here. Down in Oh, sorry, we have a pass. VRS going to Sport, going through uh, Ford Motorsports, going into Stowe. An absolutely fantastic move there by Klaus Kivikas to get himself by. And this is going to be absolutely huge for them because he's needed to get that job done. We've been talking about that Core Motorsports car potentially held holding them up. He gets themselves out front. Absolutely fantastic driving by Klaus. Well, we'll get a replay of that one up on screen. It's simple, Danny inside, not really contested this early on in your motor race. But for the time being, Klaus Kavekas will pull himself out of the way. And actually, you can see just how much that he wants to do in that VRS Coanda Simsport 18 machine here. Team's championship, of course, they are pulling themselves, trying to break away, possibly. That's always something that they need to do. If you're going to make a move, make it decisive. And well, actually, Core Motorsports in a little bit of trouble right now. They're under threat then from direct clutch motorsports just behind. It's showing you that the train was a little bit slow and now people want to get moving, Oscar. Yeah, I mean, 
they're starting to see people throughout the various trains in the field that the guys that are being held up are making the moves now. Halfway through stint one, this is when the moves are happening. We've had a, a bit of a lay period there, and then all of a sudden, two big moves in two big packs in two laps. It's going to start happening. Now's the time, and actually, we're seeing Hauskovicus already put a gap here as well at the front. So, if you want to make a move, now is the time. And it would appear that that might become a theme throughout the race, that mid-stint is when people really start pushing to play their end game, as it were. Yes, don't forget also that later on tonight, the Indy 500 will be there, full flow in action. Make sure you join us back on iRacing Live for that one here. And well, you're going to see Will Vincent, you're going to see Aaron Likens there as well. And you're going to see a fantastic bit of racing, Paul Jenkins, I believe, alongside that one as well. But for the time being, we are going to focus on your racing right now. And well, certainly you're going to see Hazel Cecilia right now in that Dark Contigo racing team. He's going to be pushing so hard and well, uh, Randy, you've been talking about it. You've been saying he's been a little bit impatient right now. He's wanting to make the move, but he's not quite been in the right position to make the move a reality. Yeah, we saw him earlier on. You know, he's really being pulled forward by that Iberica Racing Bench BMW in front of him. But I think, you know, ever since they've caught this train of cars, you know, before Quanda made that move on core, I think that BMW's been holding Jesus up just a little bit. And Jesus is, you know, stereotypically one of those drivers where if he sees a gap, he doesn't care whether or not it's a full car gap or half a one. He might just throw it up the inside on you. So I would not be surprised here in the next half dozen or laps or so if Jesus feels like he's getting held up if he tries to make that move. Looking back up to running in P number four though, Koana Simsport able to stretch this gap on core motorsports. Yes, they can, and well, it's certainly one that you need to see right now, and where you're seeing this breakaway starting to happen. Just imagine it like cyclists in a peloton. Once you get that break, you just start to push, and well, you just got to hope that you got the legs to the end right now. And well, uh, for the VRS Coanda Simsport, they are looking to try and say the breakaway is important now. Gap between uh, VRS Coanda and Core Motorsports is eight tenths of a second across the line. It says all that you need to know right now is doing everything, and actually. Battles going down here, uh, P number 15, we are going to look at here, the number 42 machine we will look at, Glacier Racing BES1, massive train of eight, and uh, Oscar, I'm going to come to you on this one, um, when you've got a driver like Hazel Cecilia there behind you, are you going to leave a little bit more room for him, uh, just in case that he does make that room, or are you going to be a sort of driver who's going to be looking to be firm, but very fair? I think in something where the competition level is this high, you always go for firm but fair because you don't know when you can afford to lose a position. Everyone's going so quickly and they're so secretive with their strategies and things such as that. You can't afford to be friendly or be nice. I mean, at the same time, you're not going to turn in on people. You're not going to get aggressive and try and put them off the road. But at the same time, you don't want to leave doors open or lift off and cost yourself any time when they're looking to overtake you. So I, I don't see the Iberica car being particularly friendly just because Jesus is an aggressive driver. I think they'll make him work for it and I'll be interested to see if any contact comes out when and if a pass does take place but I, I wouldn't think so. Jesus can drive and he, he knows from a previous round that he upset a few people by crashing into them effectively so I, I can't see him making any contact and I certainly don't see Iberica giving him any extra room shall we say to make the pass. Yes, that's certainly going to be a talking point later on down in your motor race. But right now, you're seeing quite a few gaps right now. They're just starting to abstain. They're all just starting to be uh, just a little bit more calm, a little bit more conservative here. Further on down in your motor race, you're talking about the likes of Red Line Green trying the best that they can. You're looking at the likes of TTR Next Level Racing. They're all waiting right now just to see whether their moves can happen. There hasn't really been too much of a disparity gap here between the top field and uh, lower down. You look at it in sprint racing, you look at it and you see the gap start to pile up pretty quickly right now. You talk about the guys down in 32nd position, they're only half a minute down uh, after just half an hour's worth of racing. It just shows you right now just how tight everyone is, Randy. Yeah, you know, 30 seconds, you know, 17 laps into the race, that's really not a lot when you're talking about first place compared to 30 second. You know, that's, you know that, that basically equals out to roughly a one second gap to every single car on the racetrack. And obviously there are bigger gaps happening right now. That just shows that there's a lot, a lot of tight battles happening right now. But, you know, the, it just continues to speak over the, um, with the, excuse me, with the competitive, uh, competitiveness of this series and the, the driving standards is just absolutely immense. Yes, certainly so, and actually, looking right now, Radicals Online Steel Series still looking to try and find that chink in the armour, that uh, little bit of a weakness out of the McLaren uh, Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red number 04 machine. 
It's going to be so, so crucial in order to make sure that you get that move clean, get it precise, and also break away. So Oscar, right now, train of two with these two cars here. Um, Jeremy Boosloop at the wheel trying to find a way past Eva Howler. Um, is it very important that you're going to wait behind? You're looking at yourself halfway through the stint. Is this the time where you look to wait behind someone and just hope that pit stops work out for you? Or are you looking to try and make sure that you are just going to be there, going, make the move, head yourself into lead and try and break away? I would think that at this stage in the stint, you want to be making the moves, you want to give yourself the track position and the options when it comes to strategy. The ability to react or to set the trend is always nice to have and being in front gives you a slight advantage that way. I would argue that Jeremy is going to be looking for a move, but it's always going to be difficult to make in the BMW on the McLaren, as we discussed slightly earlier in the broadcast. Most certainly, and actually an interesting point right now, Randy, is that um, Team Redline Black with three tenths of a second slower right now. And actually looking here at the battle for your leaders right now, uh, Inex Racing Red versus Redline Blue. You're going to see Oli Packler in Redline Blue, Joni Tamala there in Inex Racing Reds. So they head themselves down in towards Stowe Corner. Um, not really too much going on, but now they are starting to try and gap uh, Mr. Five Time behind the Redline Black Machine. Um, is it just all about keeping cool, keeping calm here? Because, well, once you see a car starting to get back on, that's certainly not what you want to see as a race leader. Yeah, it's definitely not what you want to see. I, I, I think in X Racing Red, I don't think they will be overly aggressive here getting past this red line blue car. I think if you're running up in the top two, no real reason to uh, to really push and be overly aggressive. We actually have the 42 Blaze Racing VS uh, car was actually caught up in an incident. What happened, Oscar? Uh, it looks as though they just span on the last lap gone. Uh, coming into sector three, just got a bit wide, tapped some grass. That Audi R8 incredibly stiff, and as soon as it bounced, it just went round. The traction control basically stops you from being able to do anything about it. Ended up nose first into a wall, and I believe now is on pit lane taking some damage repairs. Yes, not ideal at all then, and it's certainly not what anybody really wanted to see. Another casualty then so far at the moment we've had just a couple of casualties so far the number 12 pure racing team we've seen uh, triton racing in that number zero one machine they have dropped three laps down and well another uh, team that's a lap down is the pure racing team number 73 so pure racing certainly not having their right day at the um, office oscar you have to say some drivers are going to have to look over to the next race of the, of the season and well with such a massive gap between races is it going to be uh, playing on the drivers minds for a very long time uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, having gotten damage early on, you sort of just go, this isn't going to be my day, it's going to be a bad race. You chalk it up to a bit of bad luck and stuff not going right. If anything, it propels them to try harder to end up further up the grid in qualifying next time out and put themselves in a better position to not get caught up in an incident. Looking at the 06 curb surface car right now, they are under massive pressure from Thrustmaster Mavano Black behind. And well, they were pretty much nose to tail coming out of the hangar straight. And actually, you can see right now just how crucial this is all going to be. They couldn't make the move down into the right hander of Stowe. And well, you can see still going to go behind, possibly a move into Vale. You can see the doors there. And actually, he's going to dive and make a little bit of a look. But no, it is shut firmly there from the curb surface car fighting extremely hard for this one of course they're running up in the top 10 back at Monza here Randy and what you can see now they're fighting for the top 20 maybe it is starting to affect them a little bit maybe they are just starting to find out um, maybe if the choice may be slightly backfired at the start of the season yeah it definitely could be you know and, and but they're still running strong and like you said under a huge amount of pressure here from Sebastiano uh, Filosa in that thrust Thrustmaster Mavano black car, um, you know, going through Max Bex and Chapel, the Kurt Service car actually caught a huge bit of, of oversteer last time by um, and did very, very well to, to hold it and get themselves a good run going on to the, uh, um, going on um, into Stowe. And actually, we have a chance for the lead. NX Racing Red able to get themselves around Team Redline Blue. Yeah, let's get a replay of that one then. Down into Abbey then, the right, left, and well, he got the move sorted there on the inside. Made sure that he held on to it. Made sure that he kept it very, very well. They did a fantastic job. There did Inex Racing Red. They want to take charge as pit stop windows starting to go into the forefront of people's minds. We are over uh, halfway for the first stint here. And well, we are 34, 35 minutes in towards this three-hour motor race. And well, for the time being, Joni Tamala, he's going to try and break away, Oscar. Oscar, what do you think? Do you think that they're going to try and make sure that they gap right now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Any gap that they can produce, although I don't see them actually getting a gap. I 
honestly don't believe that Yoni Tamal is going to be really that much quicker than the Team Redline blue car behind him. He just, you know, pounced on an opportunity and gave himself track position when it was applicable. Granted, he has a little bit of a gap now, but I honestly don't think it will stretch out. It's going to more come down to the strategy that both teams play. I would think that it's going to be about the same. You'll see Inex retain the lead through the pit stops that we'll see in about 20 minutes' time. But a very good move, very opportunistic move from Yoni Tamala. He is a driver that we know can put the passes on and can race through the field. And to be racing that competitively and overtaking right at the front, very impressive stuff. Fantastic but driving from Yoni and fantastic from Inex Racing Red. Yes, most certainly. And Randy, I'm going to come to you because VRS Coanda, SimSport number 18 machine right now. They are arguably one of the fastest cars on track. Now, you were talking about how the BMW has a very good ability to save its tyres. Is that what we're trying to see right now? We're going to see a very strong second half of the stint because he is really trying to close down this gap here towards Team Redline Black. And actually, uh, that time by, I think it was another three tenths faster. 48.7 meets a 47.1. So actually four tenths there, Randy. You can see VRS Coanda, they're not out of this motor race at all. Oh, not at all. And, you know, this BMW, it is the lightest car in the field, and it's one of the smallest cars in the field. The Mercedes, the Audi, you know, and the McLaren are all a little bit bigger, and, you know, they all tend to eat their tires compared to this car. And over here, in, you know, right now in the last 25, 30 minutes of this stint, Klaus is pulling three to four tenths of a second per lap on these guys in front of him. The only car in the league group that's really anywhere near him is Yoni Tamala in the NX Racing Red Car. Um, you know, Klaus was again fastest this, this last time by with a 46.7, Tormala a 46.8, and both the Redline cars out of the 47s by a tenth or two. Um, so, so Klaus definitely pushing hard, and that BMW showing its late race strength. Yes, yeah, certainly. Thrustmaster Mavano Black then has found a way through on the curb surface as we saw uh, almost on the camera. But now you can see curb surface under threat. Radicals Online GT. They're going to look at the outside possibly. No, it's not going to materialize down into Vale and Club. They're going to have to wait right now. And actually, you're seeing this gap, Oscar. You're seeing these drivers starting to break away. You looked earlier on in your motor race. You saw Thrustmaster Mavano Black and Inex Racing Yellow. Very strong in this group. Now you can see them starting to break away. Is curb servers actually being uh, like the cork in the bottle right now, just stopping everything coming through? They certainly have been. And I feel as though we've, we've seen the same ever so slightly from the uh, Gecko Vortex car a bit further forward, the other McLaren that we could say is performing well at this stage, currently in 10th. They've recently let through Jeremy Bootaloop of Radicals Online. And if anything, the straight line speed and that aspect of the McLaren is presently costing it with tyre life and those cars seem to be falling away from the pace ever so slightly quicker than the other cars around them meaning that they're all acting like corks in a bottle in their respective fights uh, Dennis Grabowski for curb surface at the moment doing a good job and not really over defending when people get the run on him he knows that his car's a bit slower and when people make the moves he's not jeopardizing his own race or their race when it happens Yes, just looking right now at the number 16 Radicals Online Steel Series machine. That is Jeremy Bootaloop at the wheel. And well, let's just take a look behind and see what sort of gap there is uh, between Gecko, Vortex, Sim Racing Red when they came across the line. 47-1 meets 47-1. So they're still very evenly matched, Randy, right now as they're heading down the hang straight and towards Stowe. Um, it's going to be difficult to break away. It always will be. And we're not going to say that's a very understated point. But right now you're seeing everything just falling into line, falling into place. Um, for Jeremy Bootaloop, uh, right now he's just a few seconds back there, about three actually, uh, from the Dark Ontigo racing team. Is that going to be firmly in his sights as he looks to get to the second half of the stint sorted? Uh, stint sorted? Whoa, can't even say it twice. Uh, stint sorted. Uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely will be. And, and, you know, obviously looking at that Dark Ontigo card, you know, you still have huge questions on uh, David Alexis Jordan when he actually comes into the card. So in some ways, Bootaloop may see that a position you know, already sort of gained. Obviously, you don't want to rip on David too hard, but seeing what the pace difference was, you know, at, at Monza, the Radicals teams tend to be a little bit more well-rounded in terms of pace across all their drivers. Um, however, Jeremy's going to have to fight hard here because, you know, obviously, Evo Howler, even though that car struggles a bit through a lot of the bendy sections of this track, it is still one of the fastest down the straights, whereas that BMW is still the slowest at the end of the straights. So really, if Evo gets himself a run, there may not be very much that Evo or that uh, Jeremy rather could do to really defend against it. Yes, just looking at the gaps now between VRS Coanda and Redline Black. That is coming down again. Another four tenths, a 46.5 from Klaus Gavekas in Coanda Simsport right now. He's brought the gap down to 1.3 seconds, Oscar. And well, you have to say Klaus Gavekas here, he is on a charge. He is really wanting to be part of this. 
And now, the battle for your final spot on the podium, it is starting to materialise here towards the end of your opening stint. Yeah, this is really a representation of what we had all been expecting to see from VRS Coanda Simsport. Widely considered to be the strongest BMW team on the grid at a track that's much more suited to the BMW and, yeah, absolutely exploiting the fact that they've got a bit of tyre life and the fact that they've got clean air at the moment. Classificus has been on a bit of a charge, it's fair to say, since they got past core and is continuing to keep on that pace. With 15 minutes or so to go in this stint, plenty of time for him to actually catch on to what we could describe as the back of the lead trio, who are a bit more spread out now. But if he can just get to the back of the NX, uh, sorry, not NX, the Team Redline Racing Black Car, he's in the fight. He's in the same few seconds that he needs to be to have a chance at winning this race come the end. Yes, Actually, certainly. something else to talk about. Sorry to interrupt, but, you know, Klaus is currently the only car on track whose pace over this entire stint really hasn't dropped off by a huge amount. You know, his fastest lap is a 527, and that last lap he just ran was a 597. Everyone else is about five to six tenths off their personal best so far in this race. So, you know, not, you know, them having this pace, you know, compared to what they've run at the best uh, earlier on in the stint, here at this stage in the, uh, um, in the race and on this tank of fuel and on these tires absolutely shows that I think they're going to be someone who, tr if they're smart, I think they'll want to push as long as they can into the stint rather than come in early for tires. Because again, he takes a, he takes two more tenths out of all the, everyone in front of him. Yeah, the gap starting to come down quite a bit, and where you're seeing all this uh, just starting to materialize here in your drama here, known as the Blank Pan GT Series. Welcome if you just joined us. Where on earth have you been? And well, Randy, I'm going to ask you this question here, and it's to do back with the number 43 machine of Dark Ontigo right now. You can see them trying to fight their way through. Um, the problem that they have is they are a two-man racing team. They came in as two uh, people coming in. And well, for David Alexi Jordan, it's not a case of they can substitute another driver in. Uh, you look at the teams ahead of them, like Iberica, you look at Core, you look at Coanda. Uh, they all have three to four-man teams, so they can always chop and change to find a driver who suits their style. Is that going to be hindering? Well, we certainly saw it at Monza. I think we might just see it again here at Silverstone. Well, it's, I don't think it'll be a huge issue just in terms of having a lack of manpower. I just think the main issue for them will just be David's lack of pace. Um, if, you know, that's something that continues to be an issue. You know, obviously we're kind of assuming it is right now, given the fact that it played a, a huge, a huge, uh, a huge way into how the Monda race was shaped, both in terms of their strategy and where they ended up finishing. Um, but if David has pace, I don't think it's really going to be a big issue, at least for these events. I think where it'll be a major issue is once we get to the towards the end of the race, we might talk about this, will be the next race at Spa, because they will be one of the only, I believe there's only a, one other two-man team in this entire grid, and that Spa race is a six-hour event, so everyone else in this race, in this championship, um, will generally be from, uh, will, will generally have three drivers they can split across that six-hour event, whereas these guys, you know, in, in this Dark Contigo team, you know, Jesus is going to have to pull four hours, and, and uh, David definitely is going to have to pull two. Yes, certainly, actually, looking here again at Virus Coana and Redline Black, gap down now to half a second. It's showing right now here, Oscar. It's really showing here the skill of Klaus Kavekas right now. He is really dragged in Redline Black here for Coana Simsport, and now you're starting to see uh, the BMW come in its, into its own. You're seeing Klaus Kavekas come into his own. He's just done a fantastic job in this opening stint. He absolutely has. He's played played the game of chess beautifully. He sat behind that core car right up until the moment when he wanted to make his charge, and now he's on it. That lap did only match the front two, and Gregor had a relatively speaking poor lap on a 47.2, losing four tenths that lap, and actually there, Klaskov just goes ever so slightly wide on the exit of Stone. But a very good run from him, and it looks as though he's going to be applying pressure to Gregor Hutu basically imminently. And if possible, he's going to be looking to get past and then continue to make the small 10th, 2 tenth gains from there on and maybe even closer to the two front runners come the pit stops. Yeah, certainly, Randy, an interesting point to just bring up now here uh, for the stats buffs here. Um, you look at Inex Racing Red, Red Line Blue, Red Line Black and VRS Coanda Simsport. They all have finished drivers behind the wheel. It's just showing you just how quick and just how strong the pool of field they have there uh, that they're joining all these different teams and all these different... Uh, uh, structures right now. Um, do you think that other teams are going to struggle just knowing the fact that they are just pushing themselves to the absolute limit already? I mean, all these other teams are definitely struggling for pace compared to the uh, the, the top four drivers. And well, if you want to talk about nationalities, you know the old racing saying: in order to finish first, one must first be finished. 
Yeah, definitely. You can see that being a crucial factor right now. Actually looking here at uh, the number 91 versus the number 34. TTLR Next Level Racing versus Team Red Line Green. 45 minutes then heading up towards your play clock right now. And well, uh, for Bono, who is behind the wheel, Oscar, he's done the right thing. He's stayed behind. He's playing his own game of chess here. He's just waiting. He's just pushing the pawns out here and there. And well, he's not going to go rushing in with the queen or the bishop or the knight just yet. He's just going to wait. And he's just going to play that little bit of game that we love to call strategy. He is. If anything, he looks as though a driver and he's made his run for this stint. He started a lot further back. He's made lots of overtaking moves and really pushed the car. And now he can see the group that he wants to be with. He can see the positions that he wants to end up in at the end of this race. And he's just playing a waiting game. Going to see if through the pit stops, which is a much less risky strategy than making passes on the track, if he can increase his position, get a, a better position coming off those pit stops. And then debatably, possibly, make a run on the likes of De Contigo much later in the race. Because whilst they're four cars up from now the four cars are just very very close together a good pit stop is going to put him in prime position to maybe even start battling for a top five come the end of hour three. Oh, they were getting very close up ahead oscar here because you can see vrs koana and redline black they are really looking close looking feisty another game of chess to bring up and this is the tactical man's uh, motor race here endurance racing has always decided to bit and randy coming to you right now Kaskovekis, he could wait for the pit stop window to happen. And well, we saw um, uh, even at Silverstone when the iRacing World Championship came along, it was a very quick stop from Greg Ahutu, which brought himself out through the field. Pit stops are so important, and they are the most understated part of motor race. Do you agree? Oh, definitely. And I think right now, if I'm Klaus Kivikos, I do everything I can to make sure I don't pit when Greg Ahutu does. You know, I basically am going to sit here and just wait. And whether I come in a lap early or a lap later, I just need to make sure I don't get held up. Obviously, this VRS Coin of Simsport car right now has a bit more pace over Gregor. And that probably will translate into the pit entry and the pit exit. Right now, if I'm Klaus, I just need to make sure I can get onto and off of pit road quicker than Gregor does, no matter what. Yeah, that is certainly going to be the most important thing. You're going to see these guys now run through the hangar straight. You're going to see just how important that slipstream effect is going to be. And where you're going to see Koana now. There's an opportunity down to the inside. Is he going to make it decisive? He does make the dive here down through. But Hutu's going to come back five time in red line black. Remain side by side then as you head towards Vale. This is certainly going to be one interesting one to look at. And well, Klaus Kavekas, he will make the move sorted for Koana for the time being. But... It is certainly not decisive at the moment, Oscar. You can see Greg Ahutu, he is desperate to get back through. Yeah, he had to make that move. He was losing about half a second a lap to the leaders stuck behind Gregor. He's got such a quicker car now than that redline Mercedes. He had to make the move. You can see how much core even have closed up on this battle over the last few laps. But a fantastic run there for Klaus Kivikas to finally get that VRS Commander Simsport number 18 BMW up into the top three, up into contention for the podium and potentially the win come the end of this race. Yes, you can see just how much they are starting to pull away, doing everything brilliant. But for the first time tonight, we are going to take you RaceBot TV side by side. Don't go away. We'll be back after these few messages and the first pit stop window is just going to open. See you in a bit.
The 2016 iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series is all about change. New teams, new drivers, new tracks, even a new logo. And oh yeah, there's a brand new car. After five years of competition, we say goodbye to the Williams FW31 and we say hello to the McLaren MP430. But this isn't just a brand new car, it's a whole new ball game. And with it, we bring new excitement, new strategies, new technology. For example, energy recovery and drag reduction systems. There's a new way of thinking about racing and for all the drivers participating, it's back to the drawing board, wiping the slate clean in the ever-consuming pursuit of perfection. One little slip up, one wrong move on track, one poor strategy call, and it's over. That's the difference between coming up short and becoming champion and being $10,000 richer to boot. So yeah, change is in the air, but we're gonna start getting answers on the 27th of February as the seventh year of iRacing World Championship competition kicks off. And you won't miss a thing with every single race live on iRacing Live, coverage brought to you by RaceBot TV. So join us fortnightly from 1.30 p.m. GMT. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, then, to your Blank Pan GT Series round number two here at Silverstone. The opening third to your drama has just got underway, and, well, the big news is that Redline Black is starting to fall down your field. They are back down in a position that is known as fourth for the time being here. They have dropped themselves one position right now, and, Oscar, they are under threat from the winner's last time out called Motorsport. This is all going to come down to pit stop window. That's going to be in around about now to 10 minutes. And actually, there is a car coming out of pit lane right now. And that car is the Iberica Racing Zalem team. That's quite interesting. They're going early. They are going early, and it could well have been just to get rid of some damage at that point. Uh, add to that, they're in the BMW. We know that the BMW is probably going to be slightly better on its tyres and slightly better on its fuel. So they could maybe even get away with going a bit earlier and still only having to run the two-stop strategy. It also seems as though Gregor in that Team Redline car used up his tyres very early compared to everyone else. He's had a severe lack of pace compared to the drivers around him, the drivers at the front that he had kept with whole, all race long, and it's just dropped off very suddenly in the last 10 or so minutes, falling back dramatically now, and really, if anything, if this happens again in the second stint, that Team Redline car will be falling out of contention for the win. Yeah, that is going to be a problem that we're going to see. And actually, you're looking right now at the um, the third of the red line cars here, right, Andy? You're looking at red line green here, still battling with TTLR Next Level Racing right now. You have to say that Team Red Line Green is actually starting to lose time on the two cars ahead of them. That being Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red and the Radicals Online Steel Series car by staying behind. Um, is he that desperate on fuel to try and make the hour? Or is he really just a driver who's starting to... Oh, are they really struggling here to make the move stick? Well, it's undoubtedly not going to be a fuel issue here for Bono. You know, I think everyone is going to hit the hour mark pretty easily here. You know, we're about three to four laps out of that, uh, hitting that mark. So I, I don't think it's just a saving thing. I think he either doesn't have enough pace over that TTLR car, or he, he just figures that, he, you know, there's no real point in making that move uh, right now, considering that pit stops are getting ready, ready to happen. And, you know, you're on old tires. You don't really want to spin the car out making some silly mistake trying to get a pass done that, you know, won't really be hugely beneficial to you. Well, just a small stat for you guys here, and well, that is that they are half a second slower. That is TTLR and Team Redline Green. They are half a second slower than Vortex Sim Racing and Online Steel Series last time by. This time by, well, it is going to be a 47.7 for Team Redline Green, a 47.3 there for TTLR, and well, actually, 47 flat Gecko Sim Racing, 47 1 for Radicals Online Steel Series. Oscar, they're starting to lose touch. When does waiting become a little bit too late? Well, unfortunately for them, the waiting only becomes late when they, they, they have to make the pit stop when it suits the strategy. Going early could completely throw them off. It puts them at risk of not being able to make a stop later on or having to go to a three stop strategy at which point you're going to lose far more positions than just running a few tenths off the pace for a few laps towards the end of the stint. It's odd to see though that two 
and specifically the two redline cars that are in the Mercedes are struggling with their tyres compared to their competitors at the moment. And we know that this isn't necessarily a Mercedes problem because the Inex Racing Red Mercedes out front continues to set low 47s, high 46s and maintain the gap to second place. Yeah, definitely. That's certainly being one of the things that is causing a few problems. And actually, right now, traffic is the issue of the day right now, Randy, here. You've got to look at um, uh, Greg Ahutu, Mr. Five Time in red line black. He's got to deal with the traffic ahead of him. That is uh, the, the uh, Mad Cow Buttercup car, Michael Fabian behind the wheel at the moment. So it's just showing right now, if he gets caught in traffic right now, it might be beneficial to pit here with five minutes to go, try and make a long second stint. But you have to say right now, at this very second, Core Motorsport, they have the biggest incentive to make the move now rather than later. Hey, you're certainly right. And, you know, as, as more and more lap traffic comes into play, it might be actually, you know, a very good idea to come in three to four minutes early, uh, you know, and just get yourself onto that clear track. However, it is a bit of a gamble. We know they'll probably be on the, on the pit lane for about 90 seconds to two minutes. I'm not exactly sure what the pit loss here is at Silverstone. So, you know, they could come out and they could still, you know, if they pit early and then they still come out and, you know, on, with no clear track or in dirty air, you know, that, that completely defeats the purpose. And, you know, suddenly they'll be around cars that they didn't get any gain on by pitting early. And those cars will have shorter pit stops at the end of the race. So if right now, if you're red line black, you know, I, I'd say you need to wait until there's five to six lap cars in front of you to decide, hey, we just need to pit in right now. Yeah, car on pit road then is Iberica Racing Bank for the moment. They are there sitting on pit road. They've come in from what is position number seven on circuit. And, well, you're going to see how important it is to make sure that you get that stage sorted. Um, at the moment, you have to say pitting, it's going to take a while. It's not going to be one of these pits where you're going to be in and out in a blink of an eye, but you're going to see Iberica, they're going to fall right down the field and look for that gap in your motor race here, Oscar. Yeah, they certainly are. And again, seeing a few people going for, shall we say, an alternate strategy here, so not quite running to the hour. I wouldn't be surprised as well if maybe you see someone like Coanda coming at the end of this lap. Try and get an undercut, get onto fresh tyres earlier and really close that gap up because they know how solid their pace is in that mid part of the stint where we saw them making their moves and really moving forward on pace. So if they go for an undercut now, maybe close the gap up to the red line car up ahead of them, it could work out in the long run for them. Although, as I say that, the Coanda car stays out, continues on, looks as though it's going to be driving to the hour. Yes, certainly at the moment. And well, you can see just how important everything's going to be. Also in the pits and out again is TTLR Next Level Racing. Madison Down will stay on for a second stint then. And well, right now, you can see this is going to be where all your changes in your motor race start to happen. It's the important time now. It is what's known as crunch time. This is where you see the hammer starting to go down, especially uh, with this battle going on right now. You can see uh, the number 77, Virgil Racing Black, and the number 06, that is the curb surfers. They're going to go past pit lane. They're going to head themselves through one and two right now. And for the curb surfers here, uh, Randy, you've seen them falling through the field. Is there any way that they're going to salvage the race from here? Well, I mean, they're not really that far down from where they started. You know, they started P12, currently running P14, so I wouldn't say that it's if there's anything to really salvage just yet. It's just one of those things where they're in what is arguably probably the worst car for this circuit. And for them, still running up in P14, I think is very, very strong. They're the second best running McLaren in this field right now. The best, obviously, that Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red Car, driven by Evo Howler. And Evo has shown impressive pace, you know, at Monza as, as, uh, as well in, in terms of this race as well. So I definitely think for curb surfers, things are still looking very good. They're still running relatively patient. And I think this... Uh, I think this race might just come to them once some of their drivers whose names we can't really pronounce get into this car. Yeah, pretty much so. And well, actually, there's going to be one lap to go before these cars hit the magic number. And that is the hour mark right now. Looking here at 36, this is Gregor Hutu behind the wheel of the red line black machine here. And well, you can see just how important it is. You can see Core Motorsports behind. Iberica Zalem there. They are uh, behind off their pit stop from direct clutch. They are going to be there. Will any of these uh, three come in? And well, for the time being, that is an affirmative no. They're going to head to the hour mark here, Oscar. They are going to continue. They've negotiated the traffic, but you can see the gap. It has certainly dropped quite substantially from what it used to be. Four seconds to VRS Coanda. Yeah, certainly. And you almost feel as though a lot of the teams out there at the moment are waiting for the leaders. They're waiting to react because they know that when the leaders pit, that's when they need to be in to not lose time on an undercut. 
So if the leaders are going to maybe run it a slightly longer than the hour, shorten one of their later stints so that they have to worry less about fuel and tyre wear, then I feel as though the vast majority of teams behind them are going to actually mimic that strategy. It'll be interesting to see and it's kind of difficult to tell at the moment, but that would be my guess for now. We're going to look now at the 07 machine battle here. This is Odux Motorsport, Juan Jose Sanchez behind the wheel. And well, he is looking to try and fight through on Michael Fabian in that Mad Cow Racing Buttercup car. They're doing a fantastic job. And actually, the 23 just got past. So Mad Cow Racing Buttercup, plus one to you then, sir. And well, you can still see that battle behind there. Uh, just starting to heat up a little bit. Randy, what are you thoughts so far as every car now starts to hit that hour mark and pit stop window now certainly becomes crucial? I think the car to really watch right here is uh, Pit Stop Start Cycling 2 really is just go and the car. They've showed probably the best pace of anybody later on in this race. I think if there's anyone that's going to maybe, you know, take a bit of an audible and actually stay out later than anybody and run that tank as dry as they possibly can, it's going to be Coanda because they're losing the least out of it over everyone else, you know, so... I think they might take the gamble here. Let's see, they're coming down through the last quarter now. And again, every one of your leaders drive past this pit entry. Then, it, you know, we might see all these leaders Pucci just run pit. this thing right. Yeah, so you actually comes in. Yeah, you're going to see Red Line Black be the first to blink then out to your front runners. So he's trying to make the hour mark. The hour mark has just been hit. So Greg Ahutu, he said, I've had enough of these tires. I want to get something better. I want to push harder. I want to get back and keep some track position now and try and get that undercut strategy sorted. And you have to think here, Oscar. You have to think. Core and direct clutch. They have to react as soon as possible because what's worse than a Greg Ahutu on brand new fresh tires? Well, hardly anything, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, they're going to struggle to deal with it. And if anything, they need to pit now. They need to get onto that pit lane, preferably whilst Hutu is still on it. Because Hutu's out lap, that's the time when his tyres are cooler. That's the time when he's going to have less pace. Give him one lap, one lap that you stay out, and he's what heated up those tyres. You're losing time, just like that. You're falling away from where you were. So I feel as though it's not just them that need to react, but actually the majority of the field here. Because as soon as people start pitting, you put yourself at the risk of undercut from so many different sources. Because we're talking about gaps opening up, but in reality there are only four to six seconds between packs at the moment. And four to six seconds, if you leave that three or four laps trying to overrun people that are undercutting you, you've lost position, you've lost so much time that you're going to come under threat from people on new, fresh, heated up rubber. Yes, just looking, Inex Racing Yellow have come in, William Levesque now behind the wheel of that one. And well, we've seen some fantastic battles going on. Looking at your race leader there, number two, Inex Racing Red. This is Joni Tamala behind the wheel. And well, will he come in this time by? That is going to be the crucial question. No, we saw this before actually here, Randy. We saw them stay out and try and make the longest stint happen. And well, it's working here for the time being. And well, is there going to be any sort of response? Yes, there is. Core Motorsport here, Randy. They're coming in. They're getting the undercut. Look out for Greg Ahutu then in that uh, um, red line black car. They are going to be all about looking at this um, battle going on. I think Core Motorsport coming in right now, getting themselves a bit of clean air. I think this is a good response from them. They're obviously battling with that, uh, you know, that red line black car being uh, driven by Hutu. And I'm actually not really surprised that our top three here didn't come in uh, to the pit lane. Because obviously, you know, the gap from Koanda to, to Hutu was about four seconds. So they have plenty of clear track to really play with here and be able to get themselves... Um, as far into this motor race as they can and same obviously with red line blue and like you said nx racing red i'm not surprised any of this top three didn't come in and something else to talk about in terms of reacting it's not just to, you know when you take your pit stop here compared to to gregor if you're any of these cars in the top five is who do you put in the car because who two obviously deciding to stay in do you keep your your quick driver who qualified the car and ran this first stint or do you maybe shuffle in your number two or you know one of your other drivers in who may not have the pace yeah, that's always going to be a question here to look out for. Now, looking at Greg Ahutu in the number 36, he's heading himself now through Brooklands and now Luffield, the final corner. We need to look now here at the car of Core Motorsports and where they sit right now. Still on pit road, still getting service here. It's going to be all about when they come out. The number 33, Core Motorsports. I believe Alexander Voss is going to continue in that car for a second stint in a row. And well, yeah, here we go. He's going to leave his pit box right now. Where is Greg Ahutu? Answer to that one is he's going to be around the first corner. Jump has just about worked. Undercut strategies just worked, Oscar. Yeah, and that's where the concern is because you've seen how much time Hutu has put on core there. And what you've got to think about now is how much time is he potentially gaining 
to the cars ahead of him that are now definitely going to be lapping slower. So he's made that gap on everyone, followed by whatever gap he now makes on fresh heated up rubber. So I feel as though you're going to start seeing people have to react or potentially fall down the field. Yes, talking about reacting here, um, Randy, you see Klaus Kovekas is into the pit lane. Uh, you can see for Koanda, you can see Redline Green are coming in. Bono, who is there at the wheel. Now is the time to make the moves. Everyone's starting to get a little bit shifty in their seats. Everyone's a little bit worried. Yeah, and, you know, something else that we've seen, you know, from Monza, NX Racing Red still out there and still being one of the longest running teams here on a tank of gas you know absolutely impressive impressive fuel economy coming from nx racing red as well as team redline blue klaus kivikas coming in and actually jorn jens is getting into that car so talking about driver swaps and reacting you know that's them obviously deciding probably wanting to put their uh their quicker driver in for the final stint not that jorn's anywhere near slow but like we talked about at the beginning of the show klaus is generally you know has a little bit of a pay, uh, pace advantage over jorn yeah, definitely. That's certainly going to be one to look out for. And actually, we are going to wait to see if the leaders are going to come in here. We've just passed an hour and six minutes in your motor race. Six minutes past the hour mark. It just makes your fuel lighter and lighter. It means that you can go quicker and quicker for the stops. That is one that you need to look out for. And actually, a car that we need to see come in uh, potentially is Direct Clutch Motorsports. Christopher Osborne behind the wheel. That's certainly going to be one that we need to look out for here. Hootie's going to get the end. Hootie's going to get Jens here on the pit exit, so that's how much the undercut has cost VRS Granda Simsport. Oh, so the undercut then, it's caught out everyone, and you can see already there, the gap, Core Motorsport there, actually, you can see Jorn Jens side by side with Gregor Hutu here, and well, he's lost out in the end, it's not worked out Randy, it's not worked out Oscar, both of you guys, this is a fantastic strategy, and he's going hammer, surely he's Gregor Hutu through his stage as they still continue to go on down Stow. I'm not quite convinced just yet that that was just the new tires because Gregor Hutu's time in the pit lane was a minute and 28 seconds. Jorn Jens's was a minute and 32. So that so something happened on that pit, uh, you know, in that pit window that made Gregor Hutu stop about four seconds shorter. Did maybe Gregor here short fill? Maybe that is the potential that's going on right now. You can see many cars uh, heading themselves onto pit lane. Radical Online Steel Series, Gecko Vortex, Sim Racing Red. Direct clutch is in. Redline Blue's in here. And we're actually looking to try and get behind the wheel now as Alexi Yusi Yakola. So another very fast finish driver to another very fast finish driver. It's all going to be now down to that cut. See whether um, you see oh, Apex, uh, not Apex Racing, but uh, Inex Racing Red uh, come into pit lane right now. It's so crucial at this stage of the race. Oscar, I'm going to you. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's odd. I mean, I'm confused by people staying out and maybe Redline did short fill maybe they're just saying we'll go to the hour each time we know that there's the the additional fuel economy but I don't follow it from what I can see the strategy employed by Gregor and by Redline has been the best strategy so far and it's catching other teams out that were around them so I'm interested to see if uh, Inex Racing Red sorry, can possibly hold on well, to the lead. They're coming in right so now. Sorry to cut you off there. Inex Racing Red will head themselves down onto pit lane for the time being. And, well, we're going to have a little bit of a look then at Red Line Blue right now. Number 38. They are in an acre of space all on their own. It's not exactly uh, been the best, but... You know, they can push themselves through the field if they want to. They're doing a very good job. It's all going to be about, uh, Randy, it's all going to be about whether they've done enough here in the pit stop window to jump in X Racing Red. It's a bold strategy, a very bold strategy. Will it pay off? It's going to be hard to say. And, you know, Red Line Blue, they obviously want to push to try to get this spot away from NX Racing Red. But again, there's now two races in a row. We see NX Racing Red going further on a tank of gas than anybody else. That team gets absolutely fantastic fuel economy. Yes, yeah, certainly. You've got to remember then for the second part of that opening stint, he was out and ahead and he was pushing. He didn't have to use uh, too much there to try and save. You have to say in that first part of the race, very, very efficient there in saving all that fuel that he needs to do. We saw it at Monza and well, we're going to stay with Alexi Yusia Cola right now in the red line blue number 38 machine. So important to get that magical run here. It's going to be about the battle out of pit lane. Where is 
red, uh, Inex red. That is going to be the question that needs to be asked. You can also see Dark Contigo. They are in on pit lane. Is Joni Tamala going to come out right now? He's not going to change drivers here. We're just waiting to see. And actually, through is going to go. Uh, that is red line blue through. And very convincingly, it's not paid off, Oscar. He's done the wrong strategy. And now you have to say, undercut is surely the way forward. Well, I'm confused, but like even with an undercut, the gaps that's been produced there, that's... It's huge. I mean, did they... Did they I think, put, put no fuel in at all or not take tyres? There's a massive undercut there from Team Redline Blue. I don't well, fully understand how they've pulled it off. Every Everyone's definitely taking tyres because tyres are roughly about 25, worth about 25 seconds in the pit lane just by themselves. So everyone's definitely taking tyres. I, I think it's a little hasty to say whether or not this is the wrong strategy just yet because if that NX Racing red car of Yoni Tormala, if they took a full tank of gas, they're going to have a shorter final pit stop than, in it, than anyone else. Coanda, something's happened to Coanda, not quite yeah, sure. Yeah, and it's a fantastic battle there, side by side through Stowers. They head themselves now up towards Vale. Hutu's got the inside line here for Red Line Black. And while they're going to remain in position for the time being, you can see the scrap is still there. And actually, if you look at this one here, you've got to look out because Core Motorsport, they are still there. This is a fantastic scrap. And it's one for your final place on the podium at the moment. Welcome to the second stint, boys. Everyone has practically come into pit lane. And now it is going to be all about those who are going to try and push. And actually, something to really note, car number three, that is Iberica Racing Bank. They have done a very good job with their own car because they have jumped absolutely everyone with a really early strategy. We haven't really picked up on it here. But actually, um, Oscar, we're going to come to you. Iberica Racing Bank came in on the 55-minute mark. And well, you can see just how much it's worked. They've jumped everyone. Yeah, I feel that, like they're currently running 46 fours, but that means that since they made the stop, they've been able to run that pace. If you think about it, that's you know half a second more than half a second. A lot of people dipping even into the mid 47s. So about a second a lap on people that they were in reality very close to, because we spoke about gaps, but they were never really more than one or two seconds. So by coming in early, what they've done is just used the tyres to overtake everybody. And it's, it's probably not going to affect them particularly well as this stint goes on and towards the end of the stint. They might have to come in early again and, you know, they're definitely going to be having to take a full tank of fuel with their next pit stop. I can't see them being able to go that far. But, you know, fantastic bit of work. And sometimes when you're not right at the front, you've got to throw a different strategy at it and some caution to the wind. And in this situation for Iberica Racing BenQ, it's definitely paid off. Something right, so to talk about in terms of strategy here is actually, we look at the both Team Redline Black and Team Redline Blue. They both came in a little bit earlier over the com their competitors, and we've seen them stretch, you know, or you know, either make up or stretch about a four-second gap, you know, to their competitors. I think there's something to that. These Redline cars, obviously, you know, we're talking about a Mercedes for Redline Black and the Audi and for Team Redline Blue. So setups and you know that sort of thing aren't really going to carry over. However, I definitely think there's a bit of a strategy call coming through Team Redline here. And the entire team and the entire organization saying, you know, look, we're going to come in a little bit early. We're going to fill up just enough to get us to this two-hour mark. And that's going to give us a three to four second advantage on everyone else through that second stint. But we're going to have to take more fuel through the final one. Yeah, that's certainly something to look out for then. We are one hours and 12 minutes into your motor race right now. And your field looks like this in the Blanc Pan GC series. Red line blue then. They are out ahead of Inex Racing Red. Iberica Bank have jumped everyone up into third. The understated dark horse at the moment. Red line black in fourth. Coanda Sim Sport there in fifth. Uh, Core Motorsports in sixth. TTLR Next Level Racing Direct Clutch Motorsport. Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red and the Dark Ontigo team. That is what your top 10 looks like for the time being. And certainly going to be one that you need to look out for here. It's actually Mad Cow Bessie in a fight uh, with Virgil Racing Black here at the moment. 77 and 22. Oscar. Yeah, so... I'm amazed that battles are still happening after all of these pit stops. As unfortunately, I'm struggling to find the car here, which is my own mistake. And well, we'll try and find that one for you later on. But I can tell you, Oscar, here that these two are pushing themselves together. This is a battle for 14th and 15th on circuit. And well, it's certainly going to be one very interesting as they head themselves now through Chapel and onto the back straightaway. Uh, Stefan Mouchelard behind the wheel. He's a very quick driver. He's going on to his second stint. Do you think he can do every anything to push himself? Uh, certainly. I mean, this second stint, it's one that stereotypically in endurance racing, particularly the three-hour endurance races, is a bit quieter because there's people looking to gain position in the first hour, and then in the final hour, 
you're looking obviously to set yourself up for the position that you're going to finish in. The second hour falls under generally being a bit more cautious and gentle, and very frequently you'll see teams and drivers take advantage of that and put themselves in a position to maybe do all of their moving and shaking in the second hour when other people are really playing their strategy cards or cruising, saving fuel, this, that and the other. So it's definitely the opportunity to do it and there may be a number of teams that we've seen be quiet throughout this first hour, really put their foot down and start putting in times and overtakes in the second hour. Yes, most certainly we have seen that and well, uh, Ben Q there as I get myself uh, pronunciation checked there, it's not Ben, it's Ben Q. Uh, there, I do apologise for that, sponsors, but we will get that correct uh, throughout the rest of it. And well, looking here at Gregor Hutu inside that red line black machine, this is one of the closest battles up the field, and actually, it's really up the top. And well, strategy wise, Randy, you have to say, red line black tried to get that jump sorted. Granted, it's worked for the time being, but will this affect their run in the last five, ten minutes of their next stint? We saw how much that dropped happened and where we saw just how good Kuanda saved their tyres. Is this going to be something that we're going to see again? Are we going to have to wait ourselves another 15, 30 minutes in order to see this drama really unfold here in the battle for third? Um, It's going to be interesting because, you know, you know, Kuanda, even though they they may have, for what is at this stage of the race, may have the quote-unquote slower strategy, you know, they're still just right behind uh, that, uh, that red line black car. And something else to think about is as we come to the end of the race, Kawanda, they put Jorn Jens in the car, which means they're going to be able to put either Klaus Kivikath back in or Renz Brookman. We know Marcus Lenderman can't race due to time zone issues. Um, and, you know, they're going to have kind of their ace in the hole, arguably. Team Redline Black, Gregor, who is arguably undoubtedly their quickest driver, is going to have to get out of this car for the final stint. So that's going to be another advantage to Kawanda in this last hour of the race. You know, and if Jorn Jens can just sit where he is right now, on Gregor Hutu on this red line black car, maybe even manage to get by. I think he's definitely going to be able to uh, to make a move here, and this is going to definitely be able to benefit Kalanda in the later stages of this event. Yes, certainly you can see it, and right now you can see the pressure challenge that is going on. The pressure cooker is starting to heat up in the world of red line black here because Kalanda are pushing incredibly hard. Look at the lap times that were done last time by. Actually, look at them this time by. Look at just what the speeds are doing here right now. Because it was a 46.6 for Gregor Hutu when he crossed the line for Red Line Black. Now you look at the times. Well, it's another 46.6. But looking behind, uh, VRS Koanda, Jorn Jens behind the wheel, 46.6. 46.6 for Alexander Voss, but a little bit more further behind. This is certainly one that you need to look out for later on. Actually, look out for Inex Racing Red here, Oscar, because the gap's only two seconds. They're actually closing this one down, hand over fist. Yeah, and I feel as though th they realise that on the strategy they've lost some time there. But as Randy's been saying, there's going to be this need for a longer pit stop from Redline at the end. Inex know that by closing up at this stage in the race, as much as they can, they're giving themselves all of the strength going into the third and final hour. So this has got to be the time. This has got to be one of those absolute Banzai second stints that aren't too regular in endurance racing that Yoni Tamala and Inex Racing Red need to put in. He needs to close up that gap, get back onto the rear bumper, of the red line blue car up ahead and really get the job done. So if he's there by the end of the stint, the race really is theirs to lose. Most oh, certainly it will be just looking at uh, what times everyone came in. Inex Racing Red came in a lap num end of 38, start of 39. You look at the car ahead of uh, Lexi Yusukola's red line blue, came in at the end of 37, start of 38. Says exactly what you need to know, says exactly what you need to see right now because the push is very important right now, and well, there is a little bit of traffic between the two here, between UC Yakola, between um, uh, Jody Tamala, if I can get my words out. That is Team GT Nan getting out of the way there. Doriano Ricciuti there uh, behind the wheel, and he is down in 35th. He is now one lap down uh, marks for the time being, but you are seeing right now, you are seeing the gap starting to spring out, Randy. And now it's all about time trial. It's all about keeping consistent, making sure that you're not using too much fuel, too much of your tires, making sure that you can keep yourself to the third hour. And well, the third hour is certainly very important. It is where everything is won and lost, as it was shown at once. I mean, most certainly, this is where a lot of these guys, you know, you really have to take a balance right here. And depending on your situation, what do you choose to do? Right now, you know, if you're a red line car, you know that's. You know, if you're a redline car, you really do have to push because you know the third hour 
doesn't benefit you because you're probably going to need that longer pit stop. However, if you look at these other cars, you know, if you look at Coenda and NX Racing Red, they both need to push as well because they're going to have a huge uh, advantage with the pit stops going into that third hour. And they obviously want to try to strengthen that as much as they can. So I really don't think this is going to be a boring second hour per se. I think this is going to be one of those second hours where we see a lot of people pushing even if the gaps are a little spread out. Yes, certainly we're still seeing the battle on number 36 and the number 18. That is Redline Black and BRS Coanda Simsport. And I'm not surprised that you're keeping it there because you can see here almost being shadowed perfectly there is Jorn Jens behind Mr. Five-Time Gregor Hooter. And actually, he's going to make a dive to the inside. He's going to say, I've had enough. I want to make the move. Has he got it sorted? No, they're going to remain side by side as they head themselves to bridge. Hello, Jorn Jens. Make yourself up a position, son. You're up into a po well, into fourth position right now. The next chase for you is going to be the Iberica BenQ uh, team car there in at number three. And, well, you have to say, uh, Rio Esco and Simsport, they've had enough. They want to get going here as one hour, 20 minutes starts to hit the clock, Oscar. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic move there. Really, really late on the brakes. So I wasn't sure it was going to work. And then to you know get the power down as well as he did off the exit of the chicane in towards bridge. Fantastic work from Jorn Jens. You know, we've been saying he might not be as quick as Klaus Kivikas, who was in the car before, but he's currently proving, despite having originally lost the position to Gregor Hutu on the track, he's fought back, he's fought back with more pace, and he's got back in front. Now going to be hunting down Julian Rodriguez Moreno for Iberica Racing BenQ. And I think it's fair to say that despite the really impressive pace that Iberica BMW is putting forward, it's not really a player in this battle for third. So I would say that that's a net gain into third for Jorn Jens and VRS Coanda Simsport. And now they just need to keep their foot down again because they're a long way back from first and second and they need to put for Jorns to put in an amazing stint now and for presumably Klaus after this to put in an amazing third stint to really be in with a shot of the win. Yes, yeah, and news on the other Coanda Simsport card, number 88 is out of your motor race. And I suspect it is a blown engine that has been the cause of that one. I saw a lot of smoke heading itself over pit lane right now. And, well, that is a major shame for the second car there. And, well, actually, we're going to look at this battle here going on further down through your field. Number 71, pure racing team with number 77. That is Virgil Racing Black. They're going to be side by side, tied to the inside from Stefan Muishlar. He's going to gain a position right now. And well, for Pure Racing Team, they are starting to fall back through the field once again. It's not ideal. And next up for Virgil Black, Randy, it is going to be uh, Team Redline Green. And behind that machine, Christian Shimshak. Yeah, definitely going to be pushing hard. Is that a, that the uh, Virgil Racing Black car? Stefan Muishlar. Something interesting here. I believe all of the Redline cars made driver changes on that pit stop as well as doing the short fill. So maybe they're shuffling in, well, actually with the exception of uh, Hutu and the Redline Black car, of course. So, whereas, you know, Stefan Mujler, he's within the car for that first stint, and now he's chasing down Christian. And there is a bit of an advantage to be gained if you keep that driver in for that second stint. Obviously, um, you know, that he's going to know what the car has, whereas Christian Simzak here, you know, if there's any damage to that car, maybe that, uh, that Bono may have attained over that first stint, you know, Christian's going to have to figure out how the car is driving and, you know, how it's going to be different compared to how practice and warm-ups were. So, Stefan, though, he knows exactly what he has. I definitely think this is uh, going to be a huge advantage for Virgil here chasing down Redline Green. Most certainly we're going to see it. Actually, we're going to go further up through your field because we have a lovely four-car scrap. Direct Clutch Motorsport, Dark Contigo, Inex Racing Yellow, Vortex, Sim, Racing Red. All of them four in a line as well. We're going to say goodbye to Randy Chanel for just a small second. He'll be back in just a little bit. So, Oscar, just me and you for the time being here right now. Look at uh, Dark Contigo here coming down like a firing bullet there as he heads he has a little look a massive look actually doesn't quite work out on direct clutch yeah you see that it was way too early really to go for a move on the brakes he was never going to get it down the inside and all he did there was have a slight lockup of the front or the at the very least the abs kicking in at the front as he got towards the turning point in the corner lost out lost his ability to maybe have had a run down towards abby here and if anything yeah he's, he's blown his chance for another lap i would say a bit of a silly move, a bit of a silly look. There's nothing wrong with darting out and showing your nose into a corner and trying and putting someone off, but actually going for a move from, shall we say, a different postcode tends not to work out for you. That said, it is keeping the battle interesting, keeping people together. You can see that the Gecko Vortex car, fallen off ever so slightly, actually had a moment a few laps ago going through the final corner, which allowed for Inex Racing Yellow to come through. And as you can see, William Levesque at the 
wheel of that AMG at the moment, really harassing the two Audis in front and looking as though he wants to get a move on and get going forwards in this race. Most certainly. Welcome back, Randy Chinati. You're here, and we're going to thrust you straight into this one. William Levesque, you've got Hazel City ahead of you and ahead of that uh, of that dark Ontigo racing car. You've got Chris Tarrant in the direct clutch motorsport team. This is a fantastic little scrap there. He's done fantastic work. He was on his own, or well, his teammate was on his own, heading himself down in. Now he's just got to play the waiting game because you know Hazel Cecilia is up ahead of you for Dark Contigo. You know that there is an opportunity to pounce if something goes a little bit wrong. Yeah, William's going to be, I'm sure, I don't want to say impatient, but I think he's going to want to get this move done quickly and efficiently to get himself, you know, up a position or two. And something else that, you know, he really needs to be pushing for. They came in around lap 34, which is about the earliest that you saw cars coming down the pit lane. So we know this NX Racing yellow car probably going to have to take a bit more gas at the end of the, at the end of the race here. Going to have a longer pit stop. It's actually up in front. Dark Contigo making a move on a on Direct Clutch Motorsports doesn't quite get that move done, but they might just make a move again going into Vale, and he's actually looking up the inside of Casey Cecilia, not able to get that move done. William Levesque almost getting into the back of the Dark Contigo car. They had to check up a lot to get through Vale there. Very exciting racing happening here at the tail end of the top 10. Most certainly there you saw Hazer Cecilia in that dark Ontigo racing team car. He was pushing so hard. He had two bites of the cherry trying to make the move, but still it didn't quite happen. It didn't quite work and there's problems actually for the number 71 machine. That is pure racing. We just talked about this car a few minutes ago. Oscar, what's happening in there? Uh, just quickly rewinding now, it looks as though one of the What's that? The Mad Cow, yeah, Mad Cow Racing Bessie just went for a move and straight into the door of the Pure Racing Team McLaren. And then Pure, Pure McLaren being very sensible, uh, waiting for a lot of traffic to pass. So Patrick Pilcher at the wheel there found himself a gap, got back going. Definitely going to have had damage from that, as is the Mad Cow Racing Bessie car that was being piloted by James Stevenson at the time. Bit of a silly move, wasn't going to work. And now both of them back in packs that they weren't in before. Yes, certainly. Well, you can look, there's another four-car train. That seems to be the new in-trend, you could say, here at the moment. And, well, you can still always get social with us, Facebook, Twitter. We are there. You can see Radicals Online GT and, well, joining them, Mad Cow Racing Bessie, Frostmaster Mavano Black and Mad Cow Racing Buttercup. It's nice to see Mad Cow getting themselves there. And, well, the two of these cars, they are doing a fantastic job right now. They are up a multitude of positions, especially Buttercup here, um, Randy. You look at them, they're up 15 positions right now from their grid slot. Stunning work. You just have to say, they have made them way through one step time. Oh, yes, yeah, certainly. And, you know, there's still a lot of racing left. we got an hour and about tw uh, 33 minutes left in this event. Certainly a lot of times for people within this top 10 to really make mistakes. And, you know, when did they come in? They made a slightly, I believe they, I'm not sure when exactly they hit the pit lane. But, you know, th at this point in this, actually, they came in a little bit early, around lap 30. Um, so absolutely fantastic drive by them, like you said, up 15 spots. I think they might be able to just squeeze themselves the top 10 if they can stay the way they are and just keep running clean. Yes, we can. Side-by-side -side action then through. Uh, that is Abby there. That is Inex Racing Yellow and Direct Clutch Motorsports. William Levesque, plus one positions now. Once again, he has pushed away through back past and well actually through both of them is the driver of Hazel oh, behind. City Great. Oh Danny inside! Vortex Sim Racing Red getting a massive slide and that's not gonna work out. He's gonna drop down the field, not one position, but he is going to drop two. He's gonna drop behind. I believe that is the Virgil Racing Black car of Stefan Mushla. So uh, Gianluca Bel uh, Bellardinelli there, if I can actually say his name right. Not the best move there, just lost a little bit of control, Oscar. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened, if maybe I saw William Levesque, a couple of cars forward, run ever so slightly wide in the previous corner. Could have been a checkup, but yeah, a few, shall we say, desperate moves on the brakes that seemed to come across there. Fortunately, no contact, and I think that is very much in part to, who was it, Chris Tarrant for Direct Clutch Motorsports, seeing that the Vortex car was coming in his mirrors and getting out of it. So, yeah, another silly move, and lucky not to have any damage and contact come from it. Uh, but a few positions lost for the McLaren being piloted by Gianluca Bellardinelli. Yes, certainly, Randy. We need to talk about VRS Coanda again. They just can't seem to get out of the headlines. Six tenths faster. That time by on Iberica Racing Ben Q. Right now, they are doing a stunning job here of closing their gap. And well, with Jorn Jens behind the wheel, it seems anything's possible right now here because that gap down to 1.4 seconds when they cross the line, that could be a hell of a lot closer here as they head through Bridge and Priory. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, Yorn is showing absolutely incredible pace right now. You know, like you said, he was four tenths quicker than Hutu was that lap, and he was six tenths quicker than the Iberica racing car just in front. So that's definitely going to be, uh, you know, that's going to continue to close up. And, you know, that battle between third and fourth, though they're both BMWs, so, it, you know, Koana definitely has a bit of pace over that car in front. It's not just a balance of performance issue. But the other thing about Koana, yeah, they're about eight to nine seconds, you know, back off the leaders. However, they're the only cars that are currently running 46 fives, 46 sixes that the leaders have been running. And actually, Jorn Jens this time by is so far of the cars that have cycled through the quickest car on track this lap. So Jorn is pushing very, very hard at this stage of the race. And, you know, that's definitely what he needs to do. But he also needs to be careful, needs to keep themselves clean, and make sure they don't get an incident. Because right now, I think they have uh, they have what it takes to get a very strong, a very strong finish today. They need to make sure that they keep all four wheels on the black stuff. Oh, certainly they do. And actually, there's a car that we need to talk about, Oscar. Joni Tamala behind the Inex Racing Red Machine here, heading himself through Stowe, heading himself up to the Vale. Look at where Team Redline Blue are. They are one second away. Alexi Ustiakola hasn't managed to break the new tyre effect. One lap, well, it's showing itself right now. Joni Tamala's pushing like a steam train right now. And you can see just how crucial it is. That gap was four seconds. It's now down to one. Brilliant work from Inex Racing Red. Yeah, you certainly have to start feeling for Alexi. You see a Kona in the car in front. He's got to be feeling the rumble in his own seat at the moment of that AMG V8 behind him. It's been a fantastic run from Yoni Tormla. We spoke right at the beginning of the stint that this is what he needed to do. He needed to put himself right on the back of that Team Redline car to regain the advantage through the following and final pit stop. And that's what he's doing. He's driven so fantastically well and so quickly and consistently well through this stint that I would say it's only going to be another three or four laps until you see him potentially being within range to make a move for the lead. Let's look at lap times when they cross the line. Alexi Yushiakola, what lap does he do? He did a 46.725 this time by. Compared to Joni Tamala, he does a 46.5. Fantastic battle here. It's now under a second for the first time in a long time. And actually here, just looking here at the battle here for third, gaps 47 flat. Compare that Iberica Racing Bank, uh, BenQ actually, to uh, Jorn Jens in the VRS Coanda. Another 46.5, another half a second. Right now, Iberica, you have to say, Randy, they're feeling the effects of stopping early. Oh yeah, they certainly are. And you know, they, the tires are starting to go for these guys. And you know, I don't know, they're also starting to feel the, the Coanda effect and Jorn Jens absolutely has an immense amount of momentum right now and is just pushing ever so hard. Again, the only two cars to hit the 46.5s that lap. The Unix Racing Red car by Yorni Tamala and the VR VRS Coenda Sinsport car, uh, you know, both the only cars to get into the mid-46s, everyone else towards the 47s. Yes, certainly, and actually um, what we're seeing right now is we are starting to see what we saw at Monza in the third hour of the race. We're seeing two car packs one, two, and one and two, three and four, five and six, they're together. Because remember, Core Motorsports and Redline Black, they're still sitting together very pretty here. You see that gap there is going to be another game of chess that we are going to see playing. Actually, I tell you what, who we do need to see, we need to go back because uh, it's Christian Shimjak here in the Redline Green here, number 34, Team Redline Green. They are closing up, actually, on Direct Clutch Motorsports. They haven't had everything their own way. They've lost contact to Inex Racing Yellow and Oscar. You have to say Direct, direct Clutch here, they're down three from the grid slot right now, and they could be a little bit more as Redline Green are up eight. Yeah, Redline Green really showing their class again because we speak about how difficult it's been to pass in particularly this race at Silverstone but even back at Monza given how close the field was and how gaps opened up and Team Redline Green have been a constant feature across the last round and so far through this round as the team to be in if you want to be moving up the field and at the moment Christian Simchak fantastically quick driver putting in laps as we've seen with many other two car battles about half a second quicker than the car up the road from him so I would say two, three laps is going to get to Chris Tarrant and that's when we're going to see the battle take place and potentially the move to move that Team Redline Green Mercedes AMG GT up into the top 10 for the first time this race. Oh, certainly you will. And actually something very understated about that Iberica team as we go back, Randy, they got themselves a top 10 finish down at, I believe, Monza. They did a fantastic job in that respect and now it's going to be all about that recovery. Now they're doing very well. They're showing just how underrated they are as a team. They're pushing themselves here because there's not just prizes here for just winning the overall series. There's also a prize for winning your own category as well. And well, 
for Jorn Jens and VRS Koan Simsport 18 machine. He is really looking for a fight because that gap is next to nothing. Yeah, Jorn is there and he's pushing hard and talking about that Iberica team at Monza. They were actually the best finishing BMW coming out of the first event. Um, second place was, I believe, Radical Steel Series, one of their cars. And then third was actually VRS, um, who finished down at about 13th. So, like you said, uh, there is prizes for being the, the manufacturer winner here. And, you know, right now Iberica is sort of the favorite in that BMW simply because they had a, such a strong finish at, uh, at Monza and as well as the fact that they're running so well as they are here today. But I think Jorn Jens, he's going to rain on their parade here probably in the next several laps. He's definitely going to make a move. Yes, yeah, certainly. You can see them running down the front straight away to start their 53rd lap of this motor race here. What a fantastic um, uh, thing we are seeing here today. And, well, this is how you feel it looks. Red Line Blue lead themselves ahead of Inex Red for the time being. Iberica Racing BenQ. They are third in that number three machine. Of course, Inex Racing Red second in the number two machine. BRS Koana in fourth. Red Line Black fifth called Motorsport sixth. That is your top six. You can see your movers and shakers now on the left-hand side of your screen. And, of course, over the top, you can see where everyone is. And if you don't, uh, if you want to follow something, there's always live timing and scoring. As Jorn Jens, he'll go to the inside. He'll say thank you very much. He'll move up into the podium position here of third place. And, well, you have to say, Julian Rodriguez Moreno behind the wheel of Iberica Bank. Couldn't do anything about that one. He let that one through. He knows he's the slower driver, Oscar. Yeah, he absolutely does. And a wise decision, because if anything, battling will only slow them both down. But from the point of view of Julian Rodriguez Moreno here, sitting in the draft of the fast BMW, that could work out for him. That could allow him to maintain fourth position and maintain, at least for a little while, the gap back to the battle currently taking place between Gregor Hutu in the number 36 team Redline Black Car and Alexander Voss of Paul Motorsports in the number 33 Audi. Most certainly, and actually, there's something more important to that. He can now start fuel saving if he remains on the back. And, well, you remember, he came in early. He came in on the 55-minute mark, and now you see he's starting to feel the effects. He's starting to drop that position already. You can see Jorn Jens in that VRS Quanda Simsport car, Randy. He is starting to stretch his legs. He's starting to try and break away. At the moment, you can see after that one move, that's another half a second taken out of the lap. And, well, you can already see just how important he wants this just how much you want to be fighting in X and uh, red line here for your race win today. Yeah, Jorn is continuing to push hard, and I think it's actually very good race craft by uh, Julian Moreno to let that uh, Coanda car go. Because the thing is, is you know, obviously he doesn't have the pace of Jorn in that Coanda car, so there really isn't much to gain from fighting him for, for this third position. You know, a better part of an hour and a half left in this event, eventually that Coanda car would go through, and just fighting with them, if anything, that would just, you know, bring you back into the clutches of this Redline Black car and this Core Motorsports car. And so absolutely very very smart racing by them to just let that move go that'll lose them more or excuse me lose them less time over the course of this event and if anything they can just sit in the draft and maybe actually be able to gather more of an advantage with that draft than they would have even if Koanda wasn't there behind them to get by so absolutely you know incredibly smart driving by them yes certainly I'm gonna pose an open question for both of you and an open question um, for you we will probably get an eye card up for you in this time um, is Inex Racing Red uh, the best uh, endurance team at the moment here. Oscar and Randy, uh, one of you for, one of you against, discuss. I'm going to be for it because I predicted they were my pick at Monza and they were my pick again today to win the race. So I'm going to say yes, that they are, which means that by default Randy has to say no even if he thinks otherwise. Well, I, I don't think otherwise. Well, I do think otherwise, actually. I'm not, I'm not sure whether or not they are. They're definitely one of the dominant teams in this series, but... This is about the only series they really run in, so it's kind of hard to say, but they are showing a lot of dominance here, as right now we've been talking about. Obviously, they're a second, uh, a second back from Team Red Line Blue, but, you know, they're the only team that is, you know, running the top two so far, the opening two events, and this is certainly NX Racing Red's advantage from the way we're looking at it in terms of how the strategy might play out. So they are definitely looking very, very dominant in this championship. Yes, at the moment we're seeing there is a car on pit lane right now. That is Iberica Racing Zalem right now. They are down the field two laps right now, the number 10 machine. They're on pit road. It's not worked out for them. A fantastic thing. Just make sure that you know what you want to think. Make sure that you uh, tell us what you're thinking, of course, in the comment section. Make sure you're using that e-card as well to vote. And actually, we're going to look here. Thrustmaster Mavano Black here. They are in the number 381 machine, and they are having a lovely scrap. 
with Sylvan Pomeradi in that Radicals Online GT number 17 machine. Very crucial battle here. Talk us through it. Uh, sorry, go on, I was going to say go on, Randy, but I'll take you through this one here. Yeah, Sylvan Pomerad for Radicals Online GT. Been doing a fantastic job, and I mean, the position's not great, but you've seen an two, I believe, Radicals BMWs run very well today and only just behind a couple of the uh, the Bessie, sorry, not Bessie, the Mad Cow Racing cars, which are named Buttercup and Bessie. Always fun if you do name your cars. It'll be interesting to see if Sylvain Pomerad actually does move forward here. He seems to be ever so slightly quicker, but actually the pace between himself and the Thrustmaster Mavano black car in front is quite similar. So I'm not sure that a pass will take place for 16th at the moment, but it certainly could through the pit stops, because as we know, the BMW is being slightly better on fuel can potentially under fuel through the pit stops and get a move done there most certainly it can and well battle that we need to focus on right now here is uh the number 76 direct clutch motorsport they are in a lovely little scrap with team red line green number 34 christian shimshak at the wheel then and well you have to say They've been very understated in what they've done, but it's been heavily documented on Redline Green. Through the second half of the stint, they've been very, very quiet, Randy. And, well, you have to say, battle for your top 10. It is so important to get that top 10. It's so important to push yourself to the best that you can possibly be because you are seeing just how crucial that uh, gain is. Already up 8, possibly up 9. Yeah, there, and I definitely think this is going to be a pass they're able to get done eventually. They're matching the paces out of that Audi in front of that Direct Clutch Motorsports Audi, and I definitely think Christian might be able to get this job done. However, you know, just outside of this top 10, there is an absolutely immense amount of people that started, you know, just around outside of the top 20 and, you know, very nearly outside of the top 30. You have Virgil Racing Black running 12, who started 22nd. Mad Cow Buttercup started 29th, currently up to P14. Mad Cow Bessie, 25th up to 15th. Thrustmaster Mavano Black is up seven spots. There are an immense amount of people in this mid-pack that have managed to pick themselves up, you know, ten or more positions. Yeah, there certainly has been. There's been a heavy impetus on trying to push yourself the best that you can possibly be. There's been a lot of gains. There's been a couple of small losses here and there. And, well, at the moment, the leaders, well, they haven't really changed at the moment. At the moment, you have to say there has been a couple of changes so far in your motor race in the world. Something we actually didn't really talk about here, Oscar, is track conditions at the start of this race. Uh, the thing with track conditions is, at the moment, we've got a track temperature of 98 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Uh, wind speed is 9 mile an hour from the south, actually going up to 10. It's very interesting to see it. It's very interesting to see how the wind is going to affect these guys. It's going to be incredibly interesting to see how the track temperature uh, develops the tyres later on in the stint. It certainly is going to quickly translate some of those numbers to uh, the metric alternatives for you. So that's 37 degrees track temperature, and we're sort of fluctuating between 17 and 18 kilometers an hour wind speed currently in the southeast direction. It's all going to take an effect. I feel as though people are going to be more comfortable on the tyres now than they were at the beginning. We can see that visibly that a lot more rubber has gone down. There is a line that has formed, and there's plenty more grip for these people to be playing with. And as the grip builds up, you're going to be scrubbing the tyres less, which allows them to sort of last and provide you with pace and performance for longer throughout a stint. As actually on track at the moment, we see in the battle for 18th position, Patrick Pilcher in the number 71 Pure Racing Team having to defend really heavily from Denis Garbowski from Curb Surface and McLaren on McLaren Duel just at the bottom end of the top 20. A little bit of contact even going through the final corner on the lap just gone. Yes, very, very lovely battle here. Both of them have not had the best. Well, actually, Pure Racing here, they've pushed themselves up 10. Curb Surfers, well, they have dropped themselves 7, so you can say they are falling a little bit. And actually, just behind them is the Radicals Online Steel Series. Now, what on earth has happened to them so far? Because it's not often that we see them down the field. They were doing a very good job, but it just seems after the pit stoppers, there's a little bit of a look there from Grabowski here, um, Ra uh, Randy. Radicals Online Steel Series haven't had the best of, of times here in the second stint. They've dropped 10 positions, and now they're in a little bit of trouble. Well, part of what happened there is we, we missed it as, you know, we were talking about the strategy of our front runners. They actually got themselves a, a, spit, a, a pit lane a speeding penalty exiting the pit lane. So not only did they have to come 
not only did they have to serve a penalty, but because it was done when, they, when he was exiting the pit lane, he had to actually come back down pit road and essentially, you know, more or less take another pit stop. So that's why we're seeing uh, Jeremy Budaloop in this Radicals Online Steel Series car shuffled so far down the order, and he has a very, very good amount of pace on these cars in front of him. Right now, Jeremy is running 46 eighths. The two McLarens in front of him running mid 48. So he's got about a second and a half advantage over these guys. That's definitely going to be something he needs to get done here very quickly. I think the word that you need to describe that is out for Radicals Online Steel Series. A strategy that has failed on a mistake. And well, you can see already all over the back of the two McLarens here as they head themselves down the front straight away to start their 58th lap of the motor race. Fantastic racing going on. And well, actually, something that we need to remember here. It is one hour and 45 minutes soon that's going to come up. We are going to start gearing up for a pit stop window. But for the second time and possibly the final time as well, we are going to take you Race Spot TV side by side. When you come back, you're going to see the second lot of pit stops and the conclusion to what has been a fantastic motor race here at Silverstone. Don't go away. For iRacing to get Le Mans is, is huge. I mean, this is a unique event, a unique track where, you know, half of the track is public road, so you can never test on it, you never get experience on it, and it's eight miles in length, four minute lap time in a GT car. So, you know, even if you're here for an hour of testing, that's only 15 laps, and you're only going to see the corner 15 times that day. The first section going through the Dunlop area is pretty unique. You know, it's got elevation change and off camber. Um, then you go down Molson into the chicanes, and you know, the straights are unbelievably long. It's a tricky track, and you know, every year I've come here, this is my, being my fourth year, you learn something new every time. We've wanted to add Le Mans to iRacing for a long time, and we've really been working hard towards it for the last five years. Um, but really, things only came together in the last week leading up to this race. So it was a real scramble to put everything together. The majority of Le Mans is public roads. So when they're preparing for the 24-hour race, it's really the only time that we can visit to laser scan and photograph the track uh, so that we can recreate it in iRacing. We work closely with the ACO to get essentially exclusive access to the facility and everything that we needed to get the laser scanning and uh, photographic reference that we need to create the track. We were very fortunate to be at Le Mans at the most important time of the year and gain that experience of being there. And we're gonna really do the best we can to put that into our work and making sure that the Le Mans in iRacing is the best Le Mans. The most exciting and accurate recreation of the track possible.
Welcome back then, ladies and gentlemen, to the Blank Pad GT Series, round number two at Silverstone. The first uh, st opening stint was all about setting new order. The second part of the stint is all about maintaining the run, and someone who hasn't maintained that run for the time being here, Oscar, it's Hazer Cecilia in that Dark Antigua racing team. He's had a crash mid-break. He is out of your motor race right now, and take us through the instant it happened at the exit of Luffield, the final corner. Yeah, he's, uh, he's actually continuing on. Really heavily damaged car, currently sitting 17th and circulating slower than he was previously, thanks to the rear wing not really looking as though it's attached at both ends anymore. Yeah, coming off the f second to last corner, I guess it technically is, just put a bit too much of his car out on the gravel on the left, and once again we've seen another R8, similar to Glacier earlier, full foul of just how stiff the car is, bounced as it went from the grass back to the kerb in the track, lost control, the track control kicks in, stops you from being able to do very much about it, and actually managed to hit one of the tyre barriers over to the right-hand side of pit lane entry. And got him in a right pickle, left him in an area where he couldn't get his car turned around, and again, track control sort of playing against him. He couldn't get the thing to spin up and point back in the right direction. A lot of time lost and a lot of damage gained there by the Dark Contigo Racing Team car. And this time out, Hazer Cecilia getting the damage and really throwing away what could have been a really good race result for them. Most certainly. Um, Randy, I'm going to come to you. David, Alexi, Jordan, well, we know he's got a little bit of a pace differentiation from his teammate, and, well, it's certainly not going to help that he's going to have to have damage to contend with. Just how quickly can that damage be uh, salvaged? And if it can be salvaged in a quick enough time, is it going to be something that we're going to see uh, uh, Dark Contigo maybe scrapping it out for maybe the top 20, the top 30, possibly? Um, you know, it's really hard to say how much that, that damage is really going to affect him. The, the main thing is this does, you know, in some ways kind of take a little bit of pressure off of David. Obviously, you know, with, with Jesus making this mistake, putting him this far down the order, you know, it's, it, there's not going to be really much that uh, David could really do to, you know, have really a beneficial, uh, you know, really have a benefit that last in. And actually, Jesus is pushing really hard to get by this curb surfer's uh, McLaren. I'm not sure how much this pace difference we're seeing just yet is really due to that damage or if uh, if he's just getting held up a I'm little gonna bit I'm going to interrupt here. you here, Randy. Sorry, because we're side by side. 36 and 33. That is Redline Black and Core Motorsports battle for fifth right now. Still side by side. Gregor Hutu, Alexander Voss in towards Vale. And oh, he's going to try and run the wide line. Not going to work there, Alexander Voss. They're yeah, starting to get twitchy as the final pit stop window, you have to say, is starting to open up right now. And well, Oscar, you have to say, a good hold from Gregor Hutu, but that's the warning shot. Certainly, as, as actually Alexander Voss looks to the inside again, late on the brakes. He's going to go to the inside. We've seen Hutu lose a position here before on the exit, but Hutu definitely hooking the car up right the way onto the rubbered in line there. Maintaining position. Really good defensive driving, actually, from Hutu through the last few corners to maintain fifth on track at the moment. Interestingly, I was expecting the two of these guys to have caught up to the Iberica car, but they really haven't done it. And I honestly suspect that Hutu is going to lose this position to core eventually because they're just attacking so much and show that they have, at the moment at least, the faster car of the two. Again, we're seeing towards the end of the stint, Gregor Hutu really falling off pace to the cars around him. So I wonder if it's Hutu or just the Team Redline Black Mercedes that's struggling with its tyres. Randy, we just had an incident. Red line green involved in the number 34. So was uh, Virgil Racing Black. So was the 76 of Direct Clutch Motorsport. It happened down into Vale here. The right-hander, they both try to get a little bit twitchy together. They both make contact. They turn two cars around. One gets it into each other. And, well, they get themselves back going again. But a lot of time lost for both of them. Yeah, I mean, it certainly is, you know, tail end of this second stint. We're seeing a lot of these drivers... Uh, starting to make these mistakes you know Christian Simzak here they went down into Vale a bit of an opt opportunistic move a, a little bit in my uh, my perspective I think that was a little brave on his part and then you know almost I don't want to say a silly rejoin but he did kind of just roll himself into that Virgil Racing uh, I believe it was the Virgil Racing black car that he got into um, of Stefan Mujula so that's really two cars you know three cars actually with a good bit of damage because they had themselves uh, approaching this final hour we're about 12 minutes away from that um, and that's not going to bode well for any of those teams. Yeah, it's certainly not going to fare well. And actually, uh, for Redline Green, they are fighting at the moment here with the car ahead of Gianluca Belladonelli's uh, Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red Machine, the 04. It's not worked out very well. And where you can see they have dropped in total, I believe, two positions. Overall, they've lost one to the Virgil Racing Black team as well in the number 77. Not ideal at all. But now, 
Oscar, this is the magic word we have to say once again. It's a magical P. It's a P for pit stops. Pit stops coming in as Greg Ahutu having a little bit of a look into Luffield. Yeah, and I feel as though this set of pit stops is going to be more limited by the fuel strategies people played out during pit stop number one. If people short filled, which we have to assume at this stage at least, that the likes of Team Redline Blue did, then they're going to be under pressure from the teams that filled longer. So whilst we're not entirely sure because, you know, we don't see the numbers going in, we're not sure if people just get lucky or overrun pit stalls necessarily, but you've got to feel as though there's going to be another massive reshuffle here, and that actually, more so than last time, the point at which the cars come in to take their pit stops is going to be dictated by the strategy that they played out about an hour into this race. Most oh, certainly we've seen red line blue right now, Randy. They've started to try pulling out a gap again. The gap's back up to one and a half seconds on the track. And while red, um, in X Racing Red, they've done a fantastic job, actually, of pulling that gap down at the start of the stint. It was up at four seconds after trying to run the uh, overcut, which didn't work. The undercut paid off for red line blue. And now you're looking at in X Racing Red here. They're within one and a half seconds. They have dropped off a little bit in the last five or ten laps but they are still there, and that's the most crucial thing, and they're the only other team that's there at the moment. Yeah, they certainly are, you know, and, and it's a little early to say right now as we look back to, P, uh, to the number 34 uh, red line green car has actually just gotten himself uh, by that Gecko Vortex Sim Racing red car driven by Jan Luca Builder, uh, Jan Luca there. So very well done by... Uh, by a Christian there to get that uh, that pass done after that mistake, but it's a little early to say whether or not that undercut or or staying out later didn't work for NX Racing Red. You know, obviously, you know, like you said, at at, at the time the pit stops concluded, NX Racing Red saw them with themselves with a four second deficit, and that's coming down to you know to now as we're getting ready to make our the final pit stops come down to a second and a half. And we know that NX Racing Red has to make a shorter stop. So you know, has it really not worked for NX Racing Red? Well, you have to argue they have closed down three and a half seconds. It has worked out in that respect. But you have to remember they were one second ahead coming into the pit stop window. So Red Line Blue have done a stellar job in that respect. But what also has to be remembered right now is that you have to deal with some cars who are still struggling on their tyres. Of course, this is where the pit stop window truly comes alive, Oscar. You're looking at cars looking to try and go into pit lane. And the first one that you have to really put your eyes on here is Iberica Racing Ben Q right now because they came in first with 55 minutes. And now it's all about when everyone starts to make the move. It absolutely is. You've got to feel as though they're running out of fuel at this stage. I mean, they've been running for a long time compared to most of the other cars around them. So if, if anyone's going to blink first, it'll be them through necessity. After which point, it's a case of watching the front two, really, and seeing how they react to one another's pit strategies. Because like Randy keeps saying, you've got to have this feeling that with the amount of gap that... Uh, Alexi Yusiakola and Team Redline Blue pulled in that first pit stop. It's going to come back to NX Racing Red. But another point Randy put, uh, hit on earlier was that actually, outside of Hutu in the Redline Black car, the other two Redline cars made driver changes, meaning that they could go back to their first drivers into the final stint. Whereas NX Racing Red have already run Yoni Tormula for two stints, meaning they have to make their driver change now. Yep, that is certainly something that is very true. And looking here at Jorn Jens now heading around the final corner. Will he come into pit lane this time by? I doubt that he will. And no, he won't. He'll stay out another lap now. You can see one hour, 57 minutes, six seconds when they cross the line. That is how crucial it is. Gap then between BRS Coanda Simsport and your race lead as they cross the line was 11 and a half seconds. You have to say right now here, Randy, that... These two walked away here, red line blue and right in X red. It's not over. Racing's never over. But you have to keep going to the final um, lap is driven. And well, for VRS Grand of Simsport, they're trying to look to consolidate a po podium, surely. Well, I mean, it's 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 going to be something that's interesting to talk about because talking about that first round of pit stops, Kuana Simsport was on the pit lane three seconds longer than the top two runners. And now, obviously, that could come down to, you know, pit entry and pit exit. But if that just came down to pit stop time, if the, the bulk of that difference is in fuel or something, you know, something along those lines, that means that Kuanda will have a shorter pit stop than both of them. And that's, you know, it, it doesn't take much to get two, three, four seconds out of these cars just in the pit lane alone. So it, I, I think that we're going to have to wait to wait until all these pit stops shuffle and then see where Kuanda exactly is 
as well as who gets in the car and who actually gets in the car for NX Red and Team Redline Blue to really say whether or not Quinn is out of it. Because right now, four to five seconds in a pissed off sequence, you know, especially with different strategies, that's not a huge amount of time. Certainly not, and actually something to note here, Oscar, is that Mr. Five-Time, Greg Ahutu, Red Line Black, he has dropped himself behind Core Motorsports, Alexander Voss at the wheel, and not only that, he's dropped himself back by a second. The toe's gone. Greg Ahutu, maybe, just maybe, he hasn't made his teammate's life a little bit easier. Yeah, he's been massively struggling with the tyre life of that Mercedes all day long. We saw it in Stint 1 and we're seeing it again here in Stint 2. In fact, you can almost visibly see understeer creeping into that car now. And it was only a few laps ago that the core motorsports car got the move done, going into cops, just got on the inside, and at that point, the car on the outside... Berica very much... Benq pit, sorry. No, yep, no. Berica then coming into the pit lane. They have said, I've had enough, I want to go in. This is the final time they're going to do it. The clock when they came in for the leader was 1 hour 58, 53. So this is around about your two hour mark now. He almost, just almost made it. Yeah, they did a very long stint. That's at least an hour and three minutes they've spent in that car, Randy. Very, very good work then from them. And as you can see, Ade Coba Lopez will come into the car to drive the final hour. This is going to be a big call because they're going to get the undercut again. Yeah, they'll have the undercut, but the other thing is, you know, pitting early like this, they're going to have to have, you know, basically a heavy car throughout the, the entirety of this stint. A lot of their competition out here, you know, these guys like VRS Quinn of Sinsport, as well as NX Racing Red, the guys who went longer, as we're looking at the battle right now between the 86 of the inner, the Iberica Racing Interactive, the other Iberica car and Virgil Racing Yellow. The thing is, is that one Iberica car, they're going to have to have a heavy car. Uh, team Red, or excuse me, NX Racing Red, VRS Coin, and Sinsport, they're going to come in likely well over the hour, so they're going to actually have newer tires on a lighter racing vehicle, which will definitely be an advantage for them, but obviously it is possible that the, the Iberica Racing BenQ car can benefit from that undercut. Most certainly here, we're looking here at the battle between 86 and 4 as stated earlier here. Iberica Racing Interactive 4 versus Virgil Racing Yellow. Edwin Boss behind the Virgil Racing car. Christian Quintanuski behind the Iberica machine. And while you can see them heading themselves down towards Stowe, is there going to be a move? Answer's going to be a no. We're going to wait on that one for the time being. But we are going to focus here on the leaders, especially in such an important stage as this, because the front two, they have decided they'll go past the start-finish line once again. Is anybody else going to come in? Dan Hootu takes the pit stop. Yep, Gregor Hootu then. Five times going to come in. He will have to hand the reins over here. And this is a big one here, Oscar, here for Redline Black. TTLR it actually coming behind. Sorry. The problem certainly is a big moment here in the race for Team Redline Black got to make the driver change we don't know whether that driver change is going to bring them more or less pace and also we've got to wonder if a new driver is going to get more from the tires than Gregor did it's all going to be important and particularly between them and core towards the end of the race I think that's going to be where the race for fourth place kicks off yes most certainly it will you can see just coming out of the pit lane now is the car of Riku Alitalo there for Glacier Racing BS2 Tommy Hacker then will step into red line black for the time being. They will get themselves out of pit lane just in one moment's time. So really what has to be said right now, it's gonna be all about the gap. And actually here, Randy, the gap's coming down, heading towards pit road here with Yorni Tamala and uh, Alexius Yakola for red line blue and Inex Racing Red respectively. This is fantastic to see. This gap's not gonna go away. It's going to stay kind of relative to where it is, but it's all about when they come in. And also, Core Motorsport surely have to react now. I mean, certainly Core is probably going to have to pit relatively shortly here. And, you know, they're, you know, Alexander Boss, I believe, has been in that car the entire race. It'll be interesting to see who gets into that car. Um, so just looking at who's, it could be, uh, it's either Niles Cocker or Angelo Mickel are the two drivers that are currently uh, registered for that car at the moment. I think it'll probably be... Uh, Niles, uh, Niles Cook there who ends up getting into the car. But just looking back to the leaders between Redline Blue and NX Red, they stay out again. And actually, Tommy Hawkeye, that Team Redline Black car, he just gets put a lap down by our leaders coming out Sorry of the pit lane. Sorry to cut in, Alexander Voss does respond for Core Motorsports, goes to the pit lane. Yep, so the cut, he's decided one lap is enough. He saw it the first time by, doesn't want it. The gap is one lap already then. That is what's costing them down the pit lane. Alexander Voss then will head himself down onto pit road. He'll also have to make a driver change. That is so crucial. Finds his pit box, 
gets his pit repairs done. Uh, well, when he gets himself out and away, it'll be certainly one to see. But right now, this is certainly very interesting. You can see Tommy Hacker splitting here. And he can use this as a buffer here, Randy. You can see the buffer working right now. Um, actually, I'll go to Oscar with this one. You can see the buffer here with uh, Tommy Hacker in the middle. It's red line, red line um, in X racing here, but not for position. Is this going to be used maybe as a blocking strategy onto pit road? It may be, but it, even if it's not, you feel as though this is the point that Inex should react. They've got a red line car in front of them, stopping them from getting to the red line car they want to be in. So if I'm Inex, I know that there's only a certain amount of fuel that I need to put in. Even if it doesn't give me as much advantage as I was expecting through the pit stops, react now and try and get an undercut on the team red line blue car. We're going to stay with this one because it's so important to work out where Core Motorsport come out in all of this one then. Going to follow you on board then with Tommy Hacker in the red line black machine. Number 36 heads himself through. Race leader comes in. That is Alexi Yusiakona in red line blue. Red line blue make the first to blink once again. They're going to try and get that undercut strategy. But look out for Alexander Voss on pit exit. Where is he? Answer is he's absolutely gone in the distance. Absolutely no troubles at all. He has done a stunner. And Neil Koch, he's got himself about 10 or 15 seconds. Absolutely fantastically done by the core motorsport, uh, core motorsports guys there to get themselves out front, and you know you almost kind of have to ask the question: Was this a bit of a strategy call by Redline to try to get them a little bit more space by getting that Redline black car between the NX Racing red car and the the Team Redline blue car? You know we see uh, Ali Pacala, or excuse me, Alexi Isikola came down and took that pit stop. Ali Pacala getting back in the car for the final stint. NX Racing Red deciding to stay out is actually just in front. Tommy Hawker gets a little bit loose going through Stowe in, fr in front of Yoni Tarmala. And I definitely think coming to this lap, you know, Yoni Tarmala has really gotten on the back of that Team Redline black car. He needs to make that move down pit lane. I think this time by to prevent getting held up any further. Yes, of course, there will be blue flags being waved furiously in the face of Tommy Hacker right now. You can see just how close to this gap, around three, four tenths of a second. A little bit naughty, you could say. Tommy Hacker has very equal speed to Joni Tamala right now. And, well, it's all going to be about this run. Will he come in this time by? That is the big question. We're going to run you on board then with Joni Tamala here in this situation. Heading himself now through Priory, the left-hander down yourself to 82 miles an hour this time by here just getting himself a little bit a uh, little bit worked up here in the dirty air and where you can see just how crucial this is going to be Tommy Hacker came out in exactly the right position is this a case of sacrificing one driver for another because where you're going to see it right now they're going to stay out for another lap Oscar this is surely the mistake that they tried in the first race surely uh, make a mistake once fall on me make a mistake twice fall on you well, it all depends on how much advantage they get from short filling here. Because that's what they did. That first stop, they absolutely brimmed the car. Or so it seemed at least, given the difference in gap that came out of the pit stops there for Red Line Blue. So it could work. It does depend on the pace of Tommy Hacker in front. But it seems as though he's not really slowing Yoni Tamala down on the pace that he was doing already. And, you know... They're not doing anything wrong, they're not doing anything untoward with Team Redline Black here. They're just driving their own race and at this stage you can see Hacker in a bit more of a rhythm and actually pulling the gap out as you would expect him to do on the newer tyres. Yeah, just look at this battle further down the field. This is Ryan versus Direct Clutch right now here. This is technically uh, not ideal here. Direct Clutch are seven laps down right now and have not had the best of ace. Uh, Orion are down one lap and well quite a few cars are actually one lap down at the moment only 13 find themselves on the lead lap but we are going to keep it right now with your race leader Joni Tamala for the time being because this is so so crucial and actually another car who hasn't come in yet so far that car is the VRS Grand Sim Sport Randy that's crucial they're going for the long second stint yeah they certainly are which is you know you know in X Racing Red and Coanda they were both cars that that decided to run run late in that first stint. We see him doing it again. The first stint, the NX Racing Red car only went about a lap or so uh, further than the, the Red Line Blue car. So I would not be surprised if they come down either this lap or, or if not the lap uh, the lap after. Because right now, we are right about the point where they need to start coming down. And actually, uh, NX Racing Red, they drive right past that pit entry again. It'll be interesting to see how Coanda responds. Right now, they have about the better part of a 10-second gap they need to make up. I think if I'm Coanda, I'd probably choose to take the undercut here and get those new tires a little bit early. But again, Jorn Jens, he also drives right past the pit entry. 
This is absolutely amazing. They're going to try and extend the run as much as they can. Make sure that their fuel tanks are as low as they can so that they can short fill as much as possible and gain it all back on pit road. Fantastic strategy calls going on. You can see Inex Racing Blue down on pit road right now. Robin Friscop's trying to get in. Radical Steel Series, they are on pit road. Oh, well, there are some fantastic battles still to go on. Oh, well, there are certainly going to be some fantastic fights that we want to see and want to look out for here, Oscar, is Redline Green. And they are, at the moment, going to be having a look, possibly, at the car ahead of Glacier Racing here, who are a lap down. Yeah, they're currently just sitting behind. I think, as well, Glacier might be on newer tyres here. So, Riku Alitalo probably running newer rubber. Interesting to see, though. Team yeah, Redline, they're a group running two Mercedes AMGs and one of them able to run longer and seemingly able to maintain pace longer than the other one. So that, that's been interesting to see. Obviously, not everything has gone smoothly in the M15 Red Line Green after that incident slightly earlier on, but they were having a really good run up to that point. Yes, most certainly you're seeing it. And right now you're looking at Inex Racing Red. You talk about the disparity of half a second between old tyre and new tyre, Randy. It's seemingly not really breaking away for Tommy Hacker right now. He's sitting there very pretty. He's making sure that he's keeping this... Uh, gap sorted it's it's calm it's collected there's not really too much wrong going uh, for this at the moment but now are we going to see it move still not this is fantastic to see surely this is a strategy call that is bold it's very brave randy but you have to say it is one where both of these guys aren't going to come in unless it is absolutely paramount yeah, because we've been talking about the undercut the whole time with the new tires. There's something we could see come into effect here. If NX Racing Red stays out long enough, those t the tires on, like, the Team Redline Blue Car, they will start dropping off. So we might actually see a bit of, you know, the undercut somewhat reverse. Even though even though the Team Redline Blue Car would have, you know, gotten the new tires earlier, their tires will also start going off a little bit later in the, in the or excuse me, a little bit earlier compared to the likes of NX Racing Red as well. Actually, uh, actually, NX, NX Racing Red is Are they out of fuel? They lost a lot of time going down the hangar straight, and that car was stuttering. Did, did they just make the mistake of the race? Well, that could have been something they tried to do, trying to pull out their tank as much as they can. This might just be the big backfire that we've all seen. He's going to have to look at these speedometers. You're going to have to look to see whether this has been the wrong decision. If they're out of fuel, that is a massive faux pas. That is the biggest mistake you could possibly ever make but at the moment I think that might just be a little bit of a mistake not really the fuel at the moment you've got to remember it's the slowest part of the section here and you've got to remember the clock you've got to remember it's about 1 minute 30 in the pit lane gap to the leader is 1 minute 21 between Inex Racing Red and Redline Blue Redline Blue at the moment they are sitting pretty right now especially with VRS Guana Simsport in a very similar boat right now well, it's a minute and 30 for a full stop, and right now, you know, they've been running an hour and five minutes on, on a tank of gas. They're only going to need fuel for 48 minutes, because right now that car is still heavily hiccuping, and here he comes down the pit lane right now. But I think he, you know, just looking at what the time he lost to that, that red line black car, he may have lost himself more time than he would have gained by, by coming in late like this. This is going to be really, really sketchy for Yoni Tomal and the rest of this NX Racing red car. What does Goanda do? Does Goanda stay out they again? They stay out. Yes, they, they stay do. out. Unbelievable. VRS Kuanda Simsport go for the mega long run. Well, we saw hiccups there on the last lap. This might be one where you're seeing VRS Kuanda Simsport try and play the long game. And they're really trying to play the long game because it's trying to work out as best they possibly can. So they head through Magus and Beckett. Look out for Red Line Blue. That is the one car that we need to see right now. Where are they on circuit right now? Heading themselves up towards Abbey. It's looking pretty desperate, Oscar. It's looking desperate for Inex Red. This might be the strategy call that has decided the motor race. I mean, it's baffling. Why would you even do it at that stage? I mean, you can still pit on the lap before and have gained the advantage that you were wanting. It's just mind-boggling that they'd even run the risk at this point. So, I, mean, I don't know what's going to go on here. They're putting Jack Sedgwick into the car, who I don't feel as though he's going to have the same pace as Yoni Tamala. I think this race has just gone to Team Redline Blue. Yes, it has. Oli Packler back in, and well, he decided to pit in early, and well, it's a bold and brave decision. He's heading himself down pit row right now, and the question is, where is Inex Red in coming? They are ahead. Off now. Well, here we go. They're coming out of pit road, and well, actually, this might have just worked. Jack Segwick here, he's going to take the race lead. It has just about paid off. It could have been a little bit more, but Inex Red 
Wow! That is one that has surely scared quite a few people. Oli Packler's tyres are up to speed. Another question to note is, where on earth is that um, car, I believe, of, um, that is uh, VRS Kowanda? Are they still the out again? Now? They stay out again. And now, this is, this is something very, very interesting. Right now, with about 46 minutes left in this event, Kowanda is very quickly nearing the point that they cannot take tires and potentially have enough of a gap that they can hold off these leaders. Like we've said, tires in these cars take about 25 seconds because the fuel and the tires happen separately. If Kowanda could run deep enough in this event, they've saved themselves 25 seconds in the pit in the pit lane because everyone else has taken tires thus far. Surely, Kowanda, if they go much further, they might just make it worth it. This might be the strategy that decides the motor race. And it's so abstract that nobody could have possibly prepared for Koanda. They're tapping the numbers. They think they've got this sorted. And well, if they're running it so far, we are two hours, 15 minutes into your motor race heading up to. This is sensational stuff. It's all about the tapping of the numbers. And Oscar, you have to say, this is sensational just from a tactical perspective here. But you have to remember, Koanda's heading up on traffic. Enix Racing Yellow, TTLR Next Level Racing, and Glacier Racing 1. I mean, they are, but Randy makes a good point. The pace hasn't really dropped off that much. If Kalanda pull this off, if they don't take tyres and come out in the lead and it works, I mean, you're going to have to set your hats off to them. That's such an out-of-left-field strategy for this circuit. It's so off compared to what everyone else has been doing. And we're seeing them run two laps longer than a car that effectively ran out of fuel trying to run the longest. This is phenomenal stuff from Coanda and a really, really odd strategy if it is the way that they play it. Well, it's certainly eyes on Coanda for the time being, heading through Brooklyn's Luffield then. The next right-hander, traffic starting to come out. Is this the time when the pit lane comes alight? And well, I believe they're still no, going to stay out another lap. Oh, hello. Surely not. Surely, yes, they are. They're staying out one more lap. This is sensational stuff, and they must be running fairy dust in that car. How much fumes are they under? This is sensational, Randy. It's absolutely sensational, and, you know, talking about the pace, you know, right now, Jordan Yens is running 47 zeros. Team Red Line Blue, Ali Pakala, his first hot lap out there on new tires, he ran a 46.6, so only four tenths of a difference from new tires to old. I really think right now for Coanda, given the fact that they have about a 10 second or so deficit they need to make up, I think if you're them, I think it'd be absolutely worth it to take, take the gamble on tires. You're seeing, you've seen how well that car has been all race long later on in the stints. I think that just might be what they're up to. I think it really is. And well, something to note here is the gaps between Inex Red and Redline Blue. That is down to about a second I would put in just by my relative of working out where everyone is on track. That's going to be one that you need to look out for here. This is going to be a battle where everyone is just going to keep themselves waiting. It's a guessing game. We thought it was going to be a two-car race. This might have just turned into a three-car race. And, well, uh, Oscar, what did you say just there? V VRS just had a cough on the fuel coming down towards Abby. Oh, that's going to be then the time where they say that it is going to be coming now. They've used all of their fuel. And well, we saw Inex coughing. Now we're seeing VRS Coanda start to struggle just a little, little bit as he heads himself now in towards Priory in Brooklyn. Fantastic stuff going on. This is going to be sensational. Absolutely fantastic stuff from Coanda and absolutely fantastic strategy calls. It's going to be interesting to see how this stuff pans out over the rest of the race. Yes, most certainly, and I believe, and I am trying to work it out, where on earth is Red Line, uh, well, not Red Line, where is Coanda 18? And I believe they're going out one more. Oh, no, they're going one more, surely. This is a bold, bold strategy. This is a bold, bold claim. Yeah, it certainly is very, very, you know, great strategy called by Coanda. As, you know, if, if, if they did cough, like Oscar said, they might just be saving here. Um, I mean, surely if they coughed on fuel, you know, this car, this car generally coughs right when you're at the very, very tail end of the, of the tank of gas when there's about, you know, only 0.1, 0.2 gallons left. So I really, really think that, uh, you know, if they had coughed, they surely would have been in then. So I think this is definitely Jorn just trying to save as much gas as possible. I believe we have just had an error up from the stewards that has just affected a few things. We're trying to fix this as quickly as we can. And well, we're just going to keep ourselves informed right now. Jorn Jens is running the magic show here. He's trying everything he possibly can. And at the moment, it seems to be working. Eyes on Kowanda as well. This is a fantastic little battle going on. 
certainly is, and it's very, very brave by them to stay out the way it is. And Oscar, do you think, you know, we're starting to reach that point, you know, about 42 minutes left in this race. Do you, re do you really think Coan is going to try the double stint on tires here? I mean, you've got to, right? I mean, you've run this strategy. You can't take the tires and just put yourself where you were. It it's not worth it. I mean, I saw in the chat a while ago, I saw, I think it was Klaus Kivigus, uh, describe the Coanda strategy as YOLO. Not necessarily a term that I like to use in sim racing, but it kind of describes what we're seeing at the moment. So, yeah, I would say they're not going to take tyres. They're going to just keep going. They're going to keep pushing on. Actually, and they're going to see if it works. Right they do. So, Magic Hammer is down. This is the time where we see if VRS Kawanda's strategy has paid off. This is a major, major step forward. This is fantastic. This is stunning. This is going to be the move of the century if this pays off. And this is so out of left field. We said it before, we said it again. Jorn Jens on pit road. This is going to be for the move of the motor race. If this is for the race win, this is sensational. Watch for the car to get jacked up here. I believe the tires happen second in the pit stop sequence. You get fuel, then you get jacked up, then you get dropped, and you can clear any penalties. Right now, the car hasn't been jacked up yet, I don't think, and Jorn Jens is actually staying in this car. And that actually tells me they might just try this. The fact that Jorn is staying in the car, they're not taking a, you know, they're not doing a driver change, and actually, he's getting ready to drive, drive away, I think. He's revving the engine just a little bit. Well, you can see uh, Jack Sedgwick there in the NX Red. He's heading around the final corner right now. So it's all about Coanda's whether off. he gets... Coanda's gone. Coanda's gone. They've got the strategy. They've done it. This is sensational. They are out of the way. And they've got a huge gap. The heist of the century. You have to say it. This is sensational. This is the move that makes this sort of racing, endurance racing, what it is today. Jorn Jens, VRS Coanda Sim Sport, number 18, Oscar Hardwick. Randy Chenow, I've never seen anything like it, and will we ever see anything like this ever again? No, this is basically unheard of. We didn't predict it, we didn't think this would be a working strategy. I don't think it was even the strategy that was discussed, but Coanda have pulled something out of a very magical hat that seems to have got more in it than makes any sense. And they're now in prime position, to be honest, given that the teams behind are only really lapping two or three tenths quicker, they are in prime position to take this race. That's exactly what Coanda needed to do coming from a poor showing at Monza. They needed to come here, they needed to win. That is the position that they have put their car in. What a phenomenal bit of work. Oh, certainly, we saw it with 42 minutes to go. They put their car on pit lane. They did everything they needed to. They did exactly what was needed to. And well, they are out and away. And I believe the gap is somewhere between 10 and 15 seconds. That is sensational stuff. But for Jack Sedgwick there, sitting in NX Racing Red, he thought he had the race won with his strategy ahead of Oli Pakala. Pakala thought he did the right thing by coming in early. What must be going through the minds, Randy, when you're looking at exactly what's going on with exactly everyone fighting harder and harder and harder and well, seeing a strategy like this pull off? I think right now, if you're a Team Redline Blue or Next Racing Red, you're looking up at Kawanda and you're basically asking yourself, are those guys completely mental? Gen you know, generally the only the only track on this entire ch entire championship, you know, that during the planning stages that any team would have said, okay, maybe we can pull off a double stint on tires here, was undoubtedly Monza, and it's something that everyone really, you know, this this was one of those tracks that no one really thought of. As we're going to start trying to keep an eye on what this Jorn, uh, or excuse me, of what Jorn Jens in this point of Sinsport car is able to do in terms of lap time. The NX Racing Red car is running 47s. I think right now, if, if Jorn Jens can stay out here, if he can run 47 fives, maybe even, you know, as something as slow as 148s, I think they're going to be more than okay. As right now, it's a 14 second gap the last time they came across the line. Yes, most certainly. You've seen exactly everyone starting to pull themselves back in. We're seeing these gaps form up. And actually, it's now turned into a three-car motor race here because the top three are 15 seconds. You look back here, you look at, say, a red line black or Inex yellow. They're 43, 48 seconds back down the field. It's, it's amazing. It's fantastic here to go on. And it is certainly very, very good. That's been absolutely fantastic and something that's, I don't know if it's something while pit stop they're still cycling through. Another team that we've not talked about absolutely all race long, Phoenix Motorsports. They qualified them for themselves 36. They currently run P8. Did they make another fantastic strategy call as well to move themselves up 28 positions? 
Well, they were absolutely out of nowhere, and now you look at them right now. Rup Talika there in the car then for Phoenix Motorsports in a number 74 machine, doing a fantastic job at the moment. Puts his car up inside the top 10, and he's got there Mad Cow Racing Buttercup behind. Leighton Fine at the wheel. That's one to look at for the end of this race, but surely, surely we are looking at history. We have done absolutely everything perfect, and there has been stunning battling throughout. And well, right now, you've got to remember there's 35 minutes of a race still to go. There's still quite a few battles going on. And well, Coanda's done it. Sorry to Co interrupt, but Coanda since sport did slash in X Racing Red. This is the first time we saw seen Hot Last come through on these old tires. Jorn Jens was quicker both car than in X Racing Red were, both with clean air. So VRS Coanda since sport, they have this far made the, the strategy move to the century. Team Redline Blue was four tenths of a lap quicker, but they still have to get by in X Racing Red. I think right now, so long as Coanda doesn't put it in the wall, they have this race won. Yes, most certainly here, and actually looking at a battle further on back down the field. This is a battle one lap down. Uh, this is Iberica Racing Bank here, who have fallen the lap down here. Not ideal at all, and well, someone else who's fallen, uh, well, not fallen the lap down actually is Inex Racing Yellow. They find themselves in fifth. Uh, they've done a fantastic job, and well, continuing on with this battle, certainly something going on. Certainly uh, a very good race here that they're having, and well, it's not been ideal, they came in early and well it just didn't work out for them, did it Oscar? It, it's not, which, I mean, ha, it's so difficult to dis, so difficult to describe, and so, I, I'm kind of lost for words on what Coanda and some people have managed to do on strategy here, it is phenomenal. It's so incredible that now we're in this position where Coanda ran at their best, without pit stops, third, and they now basically have the, the game in hand. It, um, yeah, just fantastic. Really, really good to watch. Yeah, very good to watch indeed. And well, you have to say, the gap has been out and away for Jorn Jens. And well, we could go on about this for, for days, it seems, because it's just so uh, weird to see actually battle going on there. Number 06, Curb Surfers and Virgil Racing Black, number 77. Fantastic scrap going on for 13th and 14th. They are both one lap down at the moment as they head themselves down towards then the left and then the right-handers here. This is Maggots, and then Beckett, and then Chap coming on. Actually, massive slide from Anders Dahl. He might lose the position this time by here as he head themselves down the front, uh, the back straight away even, and, well, it's certainly going to be one to look out for, Randy. It certainly is, and, you know, getting the, that oversteer is definitely not what he's going to want to do as uh, I believe we're getting ready to head to a commercial break so we can bring you the last 30, these, 30 minutes of this race completely commercial-free. Yes, certainly. We're going to head off then very quickly. But when we're back, the final half an hour of your motor race will happen. Stay with us because this is going to be fantastic. The 2016 iRacing World Championship Grand Prix Series is all about change. New teams, new drivers, new tracks, even a new logo. And oh yeah, there's a brand new car. After five years of competition, we say goodbye to the Williams FW31 and we say hello 
Captain McLaren MP430. But this isn't just a brand new car. It's a whole new ball game. And with it, we bring new excitement, new strategies, new technology. For example, energy recovery and drag reduction systems. There's a new way of thinking about racing. And for all the drivers participating, it's back to the drawing board, wiping the slate clean in the ever-consuming pursuit of perfection. One little slip-up, one wrong move on track, one poor strategy call, and it's over. That's the difference between coming up short and becoming champion and being $10,000 richer to boot. So yeah, change is in the air, but we're going to start getting answers on the 27th of February as the 7th year of iRacing World Championship competition kicks off. And you won't miss a thing with every single race live on iRacing Live, coverage brought to you by RaceBot TV. So join us fortnightly from 1.30 p.m. GMT. Welcome back then, ladies and gentlemen, to your Blank Pan GT Series. This is round number two at Silverstone, and we have seen an absolutely sensational motor race happen here today. We've seen quite a few uh, ups and downs and here and arounds, and well, we've certainly seen some great battling, and well, great battling indeed, because Jorn Jens, he's out, he's away, he's got 12 and a half seconds to play with, and well, with half an hour on the clock, it has been the heist of the century done in the second phase of pit stops. It has done a sensational job. And while well, the battle for second, actually, it is hotting up. Traffic playing in effect. Oscar, you can see Ollie Packler and Jack Sedgwick, Enix Racing Red, Team Red Line Blue. This is going to be a huge battle. This is the one which is running for uh, second place and third on circuit here. Run down into Stoke. Take us through it. Yeah, very close running at the moment. And, you know, when you hit this third and final hour of the endurance race that's when you really come across the traffic more often it's more spread out and you do just encounter more of it as more people fall down a lap uh, i feel as though packler has the pace over sedgwick it's going to be a case of how sedgwick negotiates the traffic compared to packler and then how he can defend with that nx racing mercedes because we've seen it's very good on tires its pace was maintained much longer than we've seen other amgs do out on the circuit so It'll be interesting to see, but I honestly feel as though Packler's going to get this and can sign Jack Cedric in, in, in X Racing Red sorry, to third position in this motor race, which will be not necessarily the best result for NX, but certainly not a bad one. To have had second and third in the first two rounds, that would be absolutely phenomenal and almost definitely put them at the top of the standings. Oh, certainly it will, and actually, uh, the thing that they have for Solace right now is the fact that Redline Black, the team in fourth position, Tommy Hacker at the wheel, he finds himself down half a minute almost on these two drivers, so it says quite a bit about what's going on, it says quite a bit about drivers uh, starting to struggle a little bit in this latter stage of the race, Randy here, because, well, the gaps have shown, and, well, you have to say it's been absolutely fantastic to watch this race. Yeah, it absolutely has. Good driving by uh, Tommy Hawkeye and the team uh, Redline Black Car. 
get himself solidified in that P4. And actually, Team Redline Green, they moved themselves up into P7 after starting 19. So very well done by them. But right now, the team of the race, right now, we don't want to jinx them by a... Uh, by, by patting him on the shoulder too much, but you know they, they've pulled off the move the way of the race. Excuse me. Obviously, with that that huge strategy call still out there, you know Yorns is running 47 ones. Jack Sedwick's out there running 47 ones on new tires, so it's very doubtful whether or not he'll be able to reel them in. And even Ali Pakala with that draft of Sedwick in front, only running 47 two. Yeah, very much so. And actually, looking at this battle going on, Mad Cow Bessie number 22. Here, they're chasing down, I believe, Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red. Glacier Racing getting themselves out of the way right now. Certainly a fantastic battle going on. Both these guys lap down. It is a shame, but they are going to be pushing harder to pull themselves up through the field. Of course, we are into the final half an hour of racing. We are into the crunch time moment. And, well, the crunch time at the moment seems to be the battle going on in second position right now. So, Oscar... What has to be said is there is going to be a lot of impetus going on on this battle. And actually, they're nose to tail. This is where we can start getting the willometer out because the voices need to be a little bit louder. Well, whilst I don't feel as though any of us can quite out-volume, out-decibel Will Vincent, who isn't with us today, it's certainly going to be one where we do start shouting and screaming a bit more. I'm hoping that it's going to be all sensible, but at the same time, wouldn't it be good for the race if this turned into a right old touring car battle for second place? Oh, it would be a fantastic thing to watch then. Just watch this on board then from Oli Pakala's perspective in the Team Redline Blue Machine through Cops Corner. Maggot and Beckett are going to be heading up next here. The left and then the right here as they head themselves left, right once again. This is going to be an incredibly close battle. And actually, they've got two cars up ahead having a battle. That is Christian Manzano in the Odox Motorsports number 07 fighting the Friction Racing Bandits there in 11th who come back all the way from 34th to pull themselves there. Sedgwick hard to the left-hand side there. NX Racing Red looking to try and play the defensive game. Not, it's going to work for the time being, but Randy, this is the one you need to look out for because, well, they're going to go hammer and tongs and fisty cuffs might start flying. Yeah, they certainly are. I mean, they obviously don't have the pace to, to get Koana Simsport, I don't think. So there's really no point for them to try to just stay line of turn. I think this is going to be a battle that just goes hard all the way to the end, of, you know, with the last 25 minutes of this event. And it's really it's really hard to say who's going to be at in the advantageous position here. Ali Bacala seems to have pace. However, that Mercedes is definitely not going to be easy to get by. Certainly won't be easy to get by at all. And, well, you've got to try and make your car as wide as you possibly can here. And, well, it's certainly going to be one way you need to see... Uh, just how wide Jack Sedgwick can make his NX Racing Red car. He's got to try everything to do it. And I think Oli Pakula here, um, uh, Oscar, he's going to be trying to wait. He's a very experienced driver. And you can see right all over the back of that gearbox through Brooklyn. He really can. And the other thing that he can see is the traffic up ahead. And if Oli Pakula's got any sense about him, he'll look for an opportunity when Jack Sedgwick potentially gets stuck with that traffic, that's the safest time to make the move. Although, as I say that, he's got such a run here, even towards Cops, he's sure he's not going to do it there. But if he can keep his car that close as they egg it, exit the Maggots and Beckett's concept, uh, complex, rather, then that's where he can really make a move heading down towards Stowe, because I feel as though that R8 will have the legs in a straight line as long as he's got the draft. As long as he's got the draft indeed right now. And well, we are going to try and find yourself a different battle somewhere. We don't want to see half an hour of that, although it would be very good. Battle going on, 0, 4, and 22. That is still heading itself up. And actually, Danny inside goes Scott C. Gray, Mad Cow Racing Bessie, plus one. Heads up to 16th position at the moment. And well, Mad Cow Bessie making those gains, Here's Randy. Here's second. And there is a move oh, for Pack was into him. Bit of contact there. Shuffled him out. Oh, absolutely brilliant. We are seeing here from Redline Blue. He finds himself the way through there. We will get yourself a very, very quick replay of exactly what's just gone on there. He pushed himself to the inside. He just got a little bit of a knock there. That's a racer's bump. It hasn't affected things too badly, but they're going to remain here with nose to tail. And it's all about whether Ollie Packler can break from Jack's, uh, Zach, Sedg Zach? Jack Sedgwick here at Randy. Absolutely well done by Ollie there, and it's going to be interesting to see whether or not any of those, you know, either of these cars got a little bit of damage on, um, uh, because of that touch. You know, normally in these cars, you can touch, you know, front to back and get away with it, but the cars can be very, very, uh, very, very um, uh, fragile if you do side to side contact. 
And even a light touch like that could have to do, uh, you know, potentially terminal damage. Although it looks like they're going to get away with that. Um, and actually, they're still scrapping very hard just up in front. Christian Manzano is all, absolutely all over the back of Tom Ward in the Friction Racing Bandits car. And that's going to make it very, very tough for Ali Pakala in order to get by. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult indeed. No move down the inside there. But now they've got to remember the blue flags will be waving and they have to get out of the way very, very quickly. It's going to be difficult through Maggots and Beckett here. And well, Volley Pakala, he's looking to push, but he's not going to get the opportunity very quickly. This is going to allow Sedgwick to close up that gap. And it's so important here when you're looking to try and get that gap closing up even more. And well, it doesn't seem that it's going to be close enough, possibly. Well, the slipstream is going to be there to see, Oscar. It's not going to work at all for the time being. No, Jack Sedgwick's just going to have to hold station. A nice bit of work there from the back marker. There's no way that you can move over going through Maggots and Beckett's. But as soon as they got onto the hangar straight, over to the left, let the leader cars, shall we say, not quite the leader, that would be Coanda, but the, the leading group here for second and third come through very nicely, very well done. And yeah, I can't see Jack getting the move done even through the traffic. There was just that underlying pace differential that we can see between these two drivers. And I think that's going to really allow Pakala to run away with second place here for Team Redline. Yes, it is. Just looking at a comparison in lap times then, we've seen the sort of lap times he's starting to do. 47 uh, ones, 47 flats, uh, 47 seven actually that time by. Compare that to Oli Pakala here, Randy. He's running himself in the high 146s compared to the low 147s. It seems that Pakala's trying to break away and this might just be the time where you have to say second place almost might be there for the grass, but still two more cars of traffic to negotiate. Yeah, I think Ollie's just getting really, really held up in this traffic thus far. I think if they were, you know, get through these two cars and uh, get themselves a clean track, I think Ollie would clearly run away. Um, but, you know, talking about being able to maintain impressive pace, you know, we're talking about these guys running second and third. They're running low 147s on new tires. VRS Quintus, SimSport, and Jorn Jens, he's still running 47 ones on what are now basically two-hour-old, you know, sets of rubber. Yeah, it's absolutely a brilliant to see. Of course, he didn't take tires, and I think that's an inspired choice from him there because he did have 40-odd minutes just to run, and now the clock is ticking down. It's going to soon be 20 minutes to go here for the VRS Koana Sim Sport team, and, well, they will be lining that pit garage when he gets back in and will be saying, what a fantastic job there that has been done. A fantastic strategy call that has come completely out of left field that has shown everyone that it's not just the conventional that can take you that race it's sometimes the unconventional the weird and wacky wonderful world and actually traffic's just been cleared but curb surfers friction racing bandits odox and pure racing well they're going to be a lovely bit of four car battling here um, oscar as they head themselves now heading up towards abbey yeah curb surfers under i think it's fair to say large amounts of pressure from friction racing bandits who actually look to the inside just showing a nose there not going to actually make the move down into the chicane but re oh, and there's a bump there. Oh. That was actually oversteer from the curb surface car in front. Not a lot that could be done from Tom Ward in the Friction Racing Bandits car. Just that McLaren in front got oversteer. He got onto the brakes, but not quite soon enough. Bit of contact, no position change, but it's really brought the Odox car behind, currently being driven by Christian Manzano, right into play. This is really is a four-way battle and could very quickly, although Robin Friscop's looking back actually a few laps down. Uh, so four-way battle here for 10th position. And it looks as though, the night position, sorry, it looks as though Tom Ward for Friction Racing certainly has the pace at the moment over Ilya. In fact, I apologise, I'm not even going to try the surname there, but Ilya currently driving the number 06 car for curb surfers. Well, I'm going to try it. Ilya Molotovshikov. Fantastic name. A uh, very good race so far for the curb surfers right now. And actually, you can see nose to the tail. Are they going to go side by side through Maggots and Beckett? You betcha they are. Tom Ward, no. It's, it was teeth, but it wasn't quite shown. They're in through Maggots and Beckett's and now heading up towards Chapel right now. And well, it's, it's been a race of sorts here for these guys. And well, they're pushing themselves now to the limit. It's all about these last 20 minutes. They've just got to keep it on the island. Crash it now and you'll be uh, forgotten forever, um, Randy. Everyone needs to be running clean. And Tom Moore definitely has a bit of a pace over this curb service car. And he's actually going to make a pretty brave move going down into the snow. Absolutely fantastically done by them. But he's not going to be able to maintain the momentum on exit. And that curb service car able to run away as they head down into Vale. Very brave move by Tom Ward. And this battle is going to carry on just like this. These guys are being very aggressive. These guys want to finish up inside the top 10. These are guys that have struggled in the past. you know. And obviously this curb service car... 
they're currently that front running McLaren actually which you know is not the team we would have expected to see I think you know coming into this race if we were talking about a McLaren to be doing well it'd be Gecko Vortex Sim Racing Red but Curb Surfers they've come out at the top uh, the top dog in that category Yes, they have, and well, it's been a fantastic battle. It's the one we're going to focus on predominantly for the time being. They can see Robin Friskops there a few laps down. He has the potential to unlap himself in this situation here as he's pushing himself now through Brooklands. And well, for Ilya Molotovshikov and the curb surfers, they are going to be there. And actually, a little look to the outside there, Tom Ward. He's going to try and cut back in and pinch himself. No. Hold yourself on the racing line. Very, very comfortable work there from the curb surface car. Doing everything they need to do in order to hold station at the moment. Tom Ward can't do anything. Um, what can Odox Motorsport do? That's going to be a question that needs to be asked here in your battle for your top 10. But seriously, though, this has been sensational racing. This has been a sensational battling, and it's still going on, Oscar. It really is. I'm very impressed by the uh, defensive abilities being shown off here by the curb surface car evidently struggling for pace compared to those around him, but absolutely placing the car perfectly into all the corners, exploiting the fact that that McLaren is quick in a straight line, and really being able to use it, although bad run there coming onto the hangar straight. Will Tom Ward for Friction Racing Bandits be able to do anything about it? As you can see, ooh, that was a bit of a late move there from the curb surface car, but it's going to leave him open to a bit of hassle here, but Tom Ward doesn't make the move going down into Stowe. It's going to now come down to the twisty section. This is where the McLaren really struggles at the moment. This is where Tom Ward, if he sets his car up properly, if he really looks to the right sides and shows the nose at the right time, can make the move. As you can see, takes a slightly wider berth for the second part of this chicane. A very long exit here. Sweeping right-hander. He's going to run out wide, try and get the run down into the corner, but I feel as though he's still just a little bit too far back to make the move. Yes, it's a very difficult move to make, especially then. Oh, huge twitch! down into Abbey. He saves the car but he loses a little bit of time and a massive twitch again coming out. He's going to be sitting duck here for the car behind of Odox Motorsport. No, Odox Motorsport's going to pull out of the move. Very, very wise decision there but two massive saves there Randy in the space of two corners. Unbelievable scenes here and it just shows even if you're battling for a top 10, everyone's willing to push. Yeah and they're pushing really, really, really hard and they want to get this job done. Friction Racing Bandits obviously struggling for rear traction and something we've really not noticed. The way these three are going at it, you know, they're really running, you know, high 48s, maybe even 49s, you know, as actually they come across, they come across running mid 48s. The Pure Racing team behind has been reeling them in by about a couple tenths per lap. And with about 15 minutes left in this race, that's just about enough time the Pure Racing team should be able to get there and this might just become a four-way scrap for 9th to 12th. Yes, it could be, and well, a little bit of news then on the battle for second between the 38 red Team Redline Blue and the number two Inex Racing Red. That gap has extended out now to almost two seconds, so you have to say that one is going to be all shades of done, and well, actually quite interesting to see Mark Elkerman here weaving on the straights, maybe possibly getting a little bit of heat in the tyres. Well, that's certainly one to look out for here. It's actually he is three laps down here uh, for the time being, not uh, quite in the battle for the moment but just looking at this they're going to keep uh, fanning themselves out trying to find the gaps trying to find the small chinks that everyone needs to see and well for the time being not going to happen at the moment but you can definitely definitely see that there is a lot of potential here for everything to go a little bit haywire here Oscar. Absolutely is and I'm seeing again the curb surface car not only defending well but able to actually get really good runs off some of the faster corners which then negates the ability for the friction car to actually make a move into the slower corners where that Mercedes presently has the advantage so this one's just it's a constant ebb and flow and it's going to have to come down to a really gutsy moves on the brake I feel. Yes it's going to be one of these last little late breaker scenarios you're going to see it likes of Jean Alessi who used to do it all the time and now you're going to see just how close these cars are going to go once again around the final corner. Is there going to be any chance of moving? No. We're inside the last quarter of an hour. It is so crucial to make sure that you get the runs entirely perfect here. It's going to be a stunning battle to see. And well, we're going to go and just very cruelly uh, flip away from that for the time being because we have a lovely battle with the number one machine, JCL Apex Racing UK. Sebastian Joe at the wheel. First time we've actually really had a chance to talk about them. There with Luke Van Shake here. Battle for seven. 17th on circuit and just ahead of them Rico Alatalo a car who is a couple of laps down at the moment so we really haven't talked about Apex Racing UK here Randy and it just seems to me that they're getting the short end of the stick they just haven't had any form of luck here in this series yeah they really haven't you know Apex Racing is you know generally been a single-seater style team 
and GT racing, something they've not really gotten into a whole lot. However, to be running, you know, within the top 20 within this championship, still having a very, very strong outing, and to be pressuring the Virgil Sim racing car of Luke Van Scheidt, you know, absolutely impressive drive by them. And they're right now showing, I think, a little bit of pace as right now they try to get through that lap traffic of, uh, of Riku Alotalo up in front. But it's actually, they're making the move now as they go down into the slower sector of this, uh, this course. Absolutely fantastic move by Sebastian Job. Sebastian Job then with a pounce. A pounce which sees uh, Luke Van Shake drop down the field to 80 there. I don't think he really saw it coming. I thought that he had the moves. Uh, Pretty much covered off there. Didn't expect the move into Priory, the left-hander. And well, the move came along. And well, upper position, you got to go. Sebastian Job, you've done a fantastic job. Of course, we still have a lifetime in scoring there at Racebot TV forward slash timing. Uh, well, it has certainly been uh, something good. So um, let's get another iCard up then. Because we've had one already where we saw, uh, we asked, is Inex Racing uh, Red uh, arguably the most dominant um, endurance team in the series at the moment but this is my new question now is vrs koanda sim sports um pit stop window today is the likes of that ever going to be beaten for surprise and sheer excitement yes or no i mean potentially if we go to tracks with less tire wear people could run that as a more normal strategy and you could see someone try and pull something you know even further out of left field or tracks that are more fuel limited you can see people save there and suddenly come on song at a different point. And of course we could see closer racing than this today. It's, it's quite spread out at the moment. But you could see big moves happen on final laps later in the season. And that could be more exciting, I feel, than what we've seen today from Coanda. Yeah, I think right but... now, in, in terms of strategy, just talking about, you know, if there's going to be a more exciting event for a strategy choice, you know, the, the two options, in my opinion, are going to be either Brands Hatch or the six-hour race, which is actually the next one at Spa. Obviously, the longer six-hour event going to be more time for people to be able to make those strategy moves. And the thing about Brands Hatch is that just due to the nature of the circuit, you you use a very low amount of fuel. And it's going to be interesting to see whether or not there are people who save and maybe try to stretch that into a one-stop race um, at Brands Hatch. I don't know the exact fuel numbers uh, myself offhand, but knowing just the nature of the circuit, it, I don't think it would be quite out of the question. Yeah, it's, it's going to be one of those things that you're going to see, and it's going to be certainly something to enjoy. And uh, we're actually looking at Mark Elkerman right now, Pure Racing Team 73. I'm just enjoying the fact that he's right behind this group in this chain of five, and he is just weaving his car around left and right just to keep out of the battles. I just find that quite mesmerizing, I think. It's almost like a pendulum or like a, a hypnosis sort of thing. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be there. Like, he doesn't want to get involved in... He de definitely has the quicker car, but getting involved puts him at risk of ending up in a wall. What he's doing is weaving and holding back and hoping that the three in front put themselves in a wall so that he doesn't have to deal with them. It, it's a smart strategy, and when you're a few laps down, you're right to do it. You don't want to put yourself at more risk than maybe you've already been in through the race. So, a smart call there from the BMW driver, Mark Elkman, just behind. Driving for Pure Racing Team, another team that maybe hasn't had the luck that they've wanted again today. Remember, Pure getting taken out in that big incident with Orion on lap one, although I believe it wasn't this car involved in that incident, but a different Pure Racing team. Yeah, it's been one of those days for Pure Racing. They haven't had the best of luck, and well, it certainly hasn't aligned for them today. We've still got this battle on with the curb servers, Ilya molotov shikov there, and actually a little bit of a look behind there from the third car in train, Christian Manzanzo right there in Odox Motorsport here. This is the big fight for the top 10 right now gap at the front it is decreasing but it certainly won't be decreasing enough gap down to 10.7 seconds when they cross the line certainly one to just keep a little bit of an eye on here as the tires start going away and well it has been a fantastic race and i will keep saying it because it has left me flabbergasted for words here on on this strategy no one could have written the script here today oh well the script has certainly been chucked right royally out the window and rewritten even in the the minutes as now it's been sensational, Randy. And just look at even this battle here for the top 10. This is one that still has potential to put on some fireworks here in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, talking about this battle for the top 10 between Curb Surfers, Friction, and Odox, the Pure Racing Team number 71 car running 12, who's currently, you know, several seconds off the tail end of that battle, is reeling that, that group of cars in by about two to three tenths per lap. So I really think he's going to get there. But talking about Kowanda, you know, I, I was talking with a Marcus Linderman after, after that decision had been made in the in, in terms of the strategy call. That was something that they actually made on the fly, and it's something that a couple of their drivers were, were still very hesitant about doing. 
It was not something that was predetermined. It was something that they noticed over the course of this event. They noticed their pace later on, later on in the race, and said, and they basically said, "Look, this is something we could do instead of getting, you know, instead of netting ourselves second or third, we might just get away with a win here. And even if it doesn't work, they were still pretty much guaranteed a second or third place finish. Still, so a fantastic gamble by them, and fantastic on the fly strategy calling by them." Christian Manzanza then for Odox Motorsport moves himself up into 10th position. Massive twitch from Tom Ward down into turn number one, Cops Corner. There, a little bit of scare tactics working out in that respect. And now for Manzanzo of Odox, he's got to look at the curb surface and think, this is an opportunity here for a ninth place finish. I know I want it. I know I really need it here. And well, you can see just how much it means here at the moment for the, that is the team of uh, Odox Motorsport started 27th on the grid now up 17 and now has the potential to move himself up 18 here little bit of a look not going to happen this time by though here into the left hander that's going to come along into the right of Abby as well and well this is certainly Oscar where all the magic will happen to the end of your race yeah absolutely and a bit of a shout out to Odox uh, motorsport here because they're not a team that we frequently speak about they're not necessarily a front runner that we do oh, and another look they're really aggressive on the throwing the nose out but that's fantastic to watch a fantastic run from them to even be in 10th at the moment and to have the potential to run in ninth I mean that's gonna be a fantastic result for them that you know, top quarter of this field is a place that anyone should be proud of running in and Odox are about to put themselves there Yes, they are, and they have done a sensational job as well to do exactly what they've needed to do today. And, well, we've seen quite a few things go on. We've seen uh, Inex Racing Red. They were up there fighting with Yoni Tamar at the wheel. And now you look at the gap between them. Jack Sedgwick has dropped off the back a treat. He is now uh, five seconds off the back then of Oli Packler's uh, Team Redline blue car here as he's pushing that Redline blue team up into second and looking to try and maybe push a little bit more. It has been a sensational race. We're not going to lie about it here, but now we're starting to hit the five-minute bell, the five-minute warning here. And, well, we're going to look at the 0-6 machine. That's Curb Surfers once again. What on earth's going on there? They're side by oh. side. Oh, this is unbelievable scenes here through Stone. And they head themselves now in towards the left-hander here of Vale. They're going to remain side by side. Round the outside. Has he gone a little bit too deep? No. What a move. What a move from Odox Motorsport up into night. And that is a fantastic pass, Oscar. Yeah, I mean, there are some places that you just don't do it around a lap. But on the brakes around the outside there, I've seen plenty of people hold it side by side and get it then in the second element of the chicane. But just flat out on the brakes, I've got the tyres, I've got the grip and I've got the pace. Christian Manzano, Odox Motorsport, that's got to be the best move that we have seen all race long. And of course, it's got to happen in the last five minutes. To prove wrong everything I always say about these races can get boring. These guys run close from minute one to minute, what is it, 180. Fantastic stuff. Most certainly it is the five minute warnings coming along, Randy. Did we ever envision anything like this? I've, I've never seen it in uh, Blank Pan Normal, but I've, here it's been sensational in the GT, Blank Pan GT series. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think anyone really saw the, what, how this race was going to pan out. Specifically, you know, like like we've been talking about that strategy decision from VRS Coin and Simsport, and I really think this decision from them is going to change up everybody's outlook on strategy for the rest of this championship. Because you know, once you get to some of these events, for a lot of these guys, in terms of the strategy, and you've seen it, you know, for example, from the Team Redline cards, just basically their goal was to get to the hour and take that pit stop. However, seeing Coanda come in running as far down the, well, not really far down the order, but as far off from the leaders as they did, and using their tire life advantage, uh, you know, as a huge strength, and being able to completely skip out, you know, basically save 30 seconds in a pit stop, I think this is going to be something that changes a lot of the outlooks a lot of these teams have, especially when we get to some of these other events. And we're looking back now at the 06 battle again, and that's still continuing to heat up. Oh, it certainly is, and where you can see them down into Vail again, it seems that um, Ilya Molotovshikov is starting to struggle. He's got Tom Ward behind once again for the Friction Bandits here in that number 69 machine. I should say Friction Racing Bandits there to be all proper, but you can see into Abbey they come along. 
not quite close enough there. Or oh, you could see just behind there. That is Mark Helpman getting it all shades wrong. And actually, they could be side by side here. It's a bridge. No, backs out. So close the opportunity. Looking for the chance. Priory to the inside. No, not going to happen. Room was left, though. So the opportunity to Brooklands is going to present itself. Still side by side. But no, that move is pretty much all but sorted out. Tom Ward, brilliant piece of work there, Oscar. Yeah, showing off some, shall we say, karting bandit moves, like just putting that little bit of nose alongside to unsettle the curb surface car, put them into a position where they're going to run wide, give you the room, it, brilliantly set up, and to be fair, it maybe should have happened earlier for Tom Ward, he had a few mishaps on the brakes and scared himself out of moves once or twice, but that there showed some real class, it was set up for a number of corners and he got it done very cleanly, fantastic move for Friction Racing Bandits and Tom Ward in the number 69 Mercedes AMG. Yes, most certainly a very fantastic move. And by my reckoning here, uh, Randy, I think we've got either two or three laps to go in your motor race. We're heading up towards lap 100 here. And, well, it's certainly been good to watch. Uh, Rico Alatalo, Sebastian Job, Luke Van Shake here for Virgil Racing Yellow, JX, JCL Apex Racing UK, and Glacier Racing BES number two. This is going to be one which has the potential number one, number four cars still in a scrap at the moment. But it just seems seems for the moment that that number 41 machine is just proving the difference and he certainly is and you know it's it, Riku is a lap down there but he's obviously has pace on these guys so he doesn't have to get out of the way of them um you know I, I I'm sure that if you would ask Sebastian John that Apex Racing UK car he may have a different opinion however this this battle is gonna you know rain on just to the end of this race as I think you're right I believe we're gonna have two laps to go as right now VRS Coana Sinsport it's gonna depend on when they cross the line here and I think they cross the line with just over a minute and 50 seconds left so that's gonna be two to go here yeah they've crossed the line here and well I do believe two hours 58 minutes 11 seconds looking at 1 minute 47 laps if a 149 was done this could be the white flag but no I do not believe that it's the white flag this time, but he will have one more lap to go after this one. And what a fantastic race we've seen, Oscar. What a race we've uh, seen here, Randy. And, well, we've still got battles going on. Elkerman there. Uh, there is Ilya Molotovshikov. There is Niels Koch in the cool mode sports car. He's pulling himself back into number 33. And there's Vriskops and Osborne as well. Direct clutch and Inex Racing Blue. Just quickly take us here before we head towards the final lap. Yeah, I mean... It's a. Everyone seems to be falling in behind this curb surface car. Definitely struggling is the McLaren. And now, I'm not. It's very difficult to say people on different laps and different positions following in behind, but all of them with a massive pace advantage over that McLaren. The pure racing team, uh, BMW here, is going to dive out of the way of the core motorsports car by the looks of it, letting them through. So, seeing a bit more about where the people's positions are relative to the laps that they're on. And now Niels Koch for Core Motorsports running 21st is going to be looking to unlap himself from Ilya Molotovshikov of Curb Surfers just up ahead. Yes, most certainly he is, but we're going to focus now for the last potential lap and a bit on Jorn Jens in the BRS Coanda Sim Sport car here. Heads himself through Brooklands, heads himself now through Luffield for what could be the penultimate time. We're going to see if it's a white flag this time by. We believe it is not going to be a white flag. This, so this is going to be the white flag right here. Yeah, white flag will come out this time by. Across the line he'll go. Watch the clock on the side. And well, the clock is going to be 2 hours, 59 minutes, 58 seconds. This is your white flag lap. This is the final lap of your motor race. And well, there are still battles to be had. There are certainly a lot of battles to be had. And well, there's this one guy who has been fantastic here. The strategy has worked for the moment. But you can see as he heads himself through Beckett, now through Chapel, he's just got to keep it calm, keep it conservative here. He's not having to drive at full potential. He knows the red line blues 8.3 back down the road. Inex Red in the pit lane. Inex Racing Red is in the pits. Oh my word, we have just seen the worst possible thing happen. Inex Racing Red under fuel. They're in the pit lane. Their mistake is going to cost they them. They got damaged somewhere. They hit something, I think. Oh my word, we will pick that up for you after this motor race, but right now we are going to stay with Jorn Jens for what will be the final half of the race. We will see what happens to uh, Inex Racing Red after the race, but right now I think it might not be enough fuel. There might be damage as well on that one, but we have to take credits here. Jorn Jens, BRS Coanda, this is exactly fantastic. This is what we want to see 
here when it comes to GT Endurance Racing. The stars align. The strategy was made. It might have been on the fly, but it doesn't really matter when you got three corners to go to claim that you are the best around Silverstone here. Two corners left. Runs a little wide into Brooklands. He comes along. Luffield, the final corner. VRS, Kawanda Simsport. This will go down in folk tales as one of the greatest ever races you will ever see in your life. VRS Kawanda wins it at Silverstone and convincingly as well. Unbelievable scenes. It will be, I believe, a red line blue who will come across the line in second. And if I'm correct, red line are going to take two places on the podium, Oscar. Yeah, they certainly are. That error there from Inex Racing Red seems to have been under fueling for Jack Sedgwick. So they've had to go and dive into the pits, splash and dash, but it's lost them position to Tommy Hacker in the Team Redline black car. So they're going to get two cars on the podium, as you say, for Team Redline. Coming through the final corner now, Tommy Hacker done a fantastic job for the past stint. Team Redline black in that Mercedes. Going to come across, take a podium, two Redline cars on the podium. Fantastic day out for them. And even though it's going to be a disappointing fourth for Inex Racing Red, they are no doubt going to remain, or rather take, top spot in the championship with this fourth place finish. Well, Inex Racing Red aren't even going to take that because through in that respect goes through Inex Racing Yellow. In the end, where has Inex Racing Red finished? The answer to that one is they have come across the line in fifth. TTLR will come across in sixth. Red Line Green and Macau Buttercup, the only other cars on the leading lap. This has been a stunning motor race, Randy. You have to say it will all come down to things. Actually, the 17 and the 74, they're still battling. Yeah, they're still going through. They're coming down to the second to last corner now. And the Phoenix Motorsports car in the number 74, driven by Ruby Turkla, I don't think he's quite going to be close enough to get there on Miguel Martin. It's going to have to come to a mistake here. And Miguel Martin gets a very good run coming through the final corner. He's got it in the bag. There's no way Phoenix can make up that gap. No way at all. Phoenix will have to settle then for 17th position on circuit. A fantastic race. And well, with everyone across the line now, we can now bring you your final classified results here from Silverstone in the Blank Pan GT Series. And in the end, it was VRS Coanda Simsport who took the win by seven and a half seconds over Team Red Line Blue. Red Line Black will take the final spot on the podium, 37 seconds down the field. Fourth and fifth is Inex Racing Yellow and Inex Racing Red, who will feel hard done by by underfueling the car, a bold strategy which didn't quite pay off. TTLR Next Level Racing will finish sixth with Team Red Line Green seventh. Mad Cow Racing Buttercup. There, it's nice to see Buttercup up in 8th with Odox and Friction 9th and 10th in a fantastic battle further down the race. We're going to move on to the second page and cycle down through because there has been some fantastic battles up and down. And well, 29th to 8th, uh, massive credit to Buttercup. But you look down, you can see Mad Cow Bessie 25th to 14th. You look at Fenix, actually, 36th to 17th. Fantastic job from them. Same for Apex Racing UK, 32nd to 18th, plus 14 positions. And while you look back down here onto the third page, cars two laps down, you look at Core Motorsports, what could have been? Core Sim Racing, what could have been? Three laps down. And cars that failed to finish this motor race, you look at Iberica Racing, uh, BenQ, Iberica Racing Interactive, as Interactive 4 as well. You look at Frostmaster and Mavano back, black there, the other Coanda Sim Sport car, and two pure racing cars out of the motor race very early on. But it was a certainly a stunning race here. And what sort of message does this send here when six hours, not three, is going to be the problem here when they head on July 17th, I believe, over to Spa Francorchamps for six hours? Randy and Oscar, we're going to go to Randy first. Both of you, what are your opinions? I think Kyoanda's, you know, strategy call here might, like I said earlier, it's going to change the way a lot of teams think about this sort of racing, I think. Obviously, you know, at, at a track like Spa, with, well, especially with it being six hours, if you can take three to four minutes, you know, past the hour every single stint, suddenly that final stint, you're coming to take, you know, take fuel 40, you know, minutes left in the race, you know, maybe, maybe a bit less than that, I'm kind of just guessing here, if you find yourself taking a late pit stop like that, I think it's going to become, you know, a huge strategy call to just skip out on the tires, because we saw in that last pit stop, Coanda's, you know, time in the pits, that was 57.4, uh, 
Team Redline Blue, they were in the pit lane for a minute 27 seconds. So obviously, you know, 30 seconds gained of just not taking tires. I think we see any any uh, any race again where that final stop might be able to be done late in the race. I think we're going to start seeing teams just double stint tires. Yeah, I think it's going to be very good. Oscar, what's your um, message that you think is going to come out of this one here from Silverstone? I think that Coanda have really thrown the cat among the pigeons and... There are going to be people looking to mimic that kind of strategy at all future rounds, not just Spa, where you could basically run that strategy twice and then you're pulling, what, 30-odd seconds of actual on-track advantage or something ridiculous like that. So there's going to be a lot of people looking into it, a lot of people crunching numbers, and I mean, certainly for people like Inex Racing Red, they're going to be crunching fuel numbers, seeing as they nearly ran out once and did run out that second time round and lost position. So... A lot for people to take from here and a lot going forward now onto the big race, the six-hour race at Spa in a couple of months' time. Yes, most certainly. And, well, you got to stay tuned on Race Spot TV for that. TV for that. Also, what you got to stay tuned on Race Spot TV for is that we have two more broadcasts coming up tonight. One of them is the uh, 2K GT World Cup. The other one, the big one, the Indianapolis 500, which will be here on iRacing Live as well. But for the time being, that's been Randy Chenow. That's been Oscar Harlick. That's been Hugo Luis behind the cameras. I've been Jake Sperry. And VRS Coanda Simsport number 18 has just shown everyone that it's not about what's in the book. It's how you write it. Good night. <laughs>